All right. <laughs> hey, everybody. I can't believe it, but this is the end of the Porch Tour series. Once again, we have to thank Gretchen McKay for the amazing Post-Gazette article that came out early on in July whenever we launched the Porch Tour. This is Porch Tour year number four, only because uh, last year with, with the COVID um, outbreak, I mean, obviously, we're still working on getting things back to some kind of good state of mind but we were able to at least do it in a in a more condensed fashion and do the porch tours this year and we're so grateful because Gretchen helped make that happen so it's porch tour number six and uh, this is where you see the behind the scenes of the Ajaga podcast the mistakes we make the silly jokes the people coming in and out something to do on a weekend whenever you don't want to watch tv and you, you're trying to do something other than exercise Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, as you know, uh, it's the morning, and we figure there's no better way to start your morning than with a song. Mm -hmm. And then we'll start with our. So, our musician is Mark Ferrari. He's a very right. good friend. We've had a long history. He actually used to perform at Atria's. Um, he worked with my dad for a lot of years, and we had him on a fireplace tour last year, and he has been on our bucket list to get back. So, we're so excited that he uh, he's here. He's actually in the North Hills for us, coming from the South Hills, which is pretty exciting. No Pittsburghers so gets, do that. He gets more right? applause. Yeah. Yeah. South Hillians don't let uh, North Hillians in their really territory, don't. right? No, no. You have to get a permit. Oh, yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. So Mark's going to start us off with the song. All right. This is one of my newest songs. The song is called It's Going to Be Great. Oh, he's so good. It's going to be good. It's going to be great. It's going to be better. I can't wait. Making my move. Live for today. Sing like a bird, fly like a plane. It don't matter, cause it's gonna be great. Whoa, 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 whoa. Here comes the sun. And I'll do mine oh, Blow out the candles on the cake Make a wish for better days Call the weatherman, I'm blowing me away It's gonna be good, it's gonna be great It's gonna be better, I can't wait Making my mood It's not a party without a little pain. Oh, blow out the candles on the cake. Raise a toast to better days. Call the doctor. These restraints are about to break. It's going to be good. It's going to be great. It's going to be better. I can't wait. Making my move. Live for today. I got dreams left to imagine. I have faith on my breath. Oh, yeah. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be better. I can't wait. Making my move. Live for the day. Sing like a bird. Fly like a plane. It don't matter cause It don't matter cause It don't matter cause It's gonna be great Whoa, whoa, whoa It's gonna be great Whoa, whoa, whoa It's gonna be better It's gonna be great It's gonna be better, yeah It's gonna be 
It's gonna be great. I mean, that's why he's one of my faves. It's so important to us that every week when we're doing this, and we were even saying this to Mark, that we have local music because Pittsburgh, you know, we've birthed so many amazing musicians and, and performers. And it's super cool that Mark is one of them because we get to talk to him a little bit later and hear another song where he is going to inform us of some of the, uh, the big shows that he has coming up soon. So thank you so much, Mark. We appreciate that so much. So this is where I waste time waiting for John to do the annual wipe off. So so that he can come back and we can start the podcast. But once again, before we even go into that, we have to thank everybody who was was instrumental in the Zachary's Mission six place tour this year. Kennywood, the Pierogi Festival, the Heinz History Center, uh, Mary Mac Bakehouse, who's actually here today, and it is the J&D Waterproofing Tour, so we have to thank them as well. Um, but we had so many great people. North Country Brewing, who we brought the Jagoff beer w uh, because of them. So yeah, we should have it on the table when it's too. sitting. I know, but you it's know, it's chilling. Warm. My phone actually is heating up. It's on the uh, emergency mode, so maybe it's not good to put beer in the sun. Good point. It's like a gremlin. Yeah, good point. All right, so... Good? Did I start? Yeah. Did I, uh, you installed well. Stall well enough? All right, so... I just could not get that thing open. I know, right? I thought it was... You know, we need a better, better prop person to kind of I prep know, all these things together, know, right? So, know. all right, ready? I'm ready. Rora Conda is aware of the vehicle shortage, but there is never a shortage on helping a customer. If you know what make, brand, or style car suits you, chat with Rip now and get exactly what you want by pre-ordering. And if you do not want to wait, that's okay because there are plenty of certified used vehicles waiting to be claimed. As always, visit Rorick.com for all of your vehicle needs. And now we start the Yajagov podcast from... Porch number five... Six. six. This is actually six, right? Yeah. Yeah. The Merry Widows. All right. So this is the Yajagoff podcast. And uh, if you're listening for the very first time, we ask that you subscribe to it. And uh, wherever you're on your podcast. But if you're on iTunes, you can actually leave a comment. And we would appreciate a positive comment. Positive is the key. Yeah. And if you listen to, if you subscribe to the podcast, you can be the first ones to get it. Because it comes out on the Odyssey app uh, around 1 or 2 o'clock in, in the afternoon on Mondays. But then it comes out on yajagoff.com On Monday, every KDKA. Tuesday. Monday. Monday. Yeah. That's right. Uh, as always, we encourage you to listen to the, the group over there, Y108, 93.7 The Fan, as well as 100.7 Star, because we deliver the daily dose of happiness every day with Kel on air at 455. And because of our blog posts, we deliver the Jagoff of the Week with Alista around the 11 o'clock hour on Fridays. Exactly. That's a tough one to choose because there's lots of headlines that deserve Jagoff. Right. So. so what's on this podcast? This week we have a... Again, it's full of people here. Oh my gosh. It's, full it's full of, of good, of interesting people. people. And, you know, I think it's important to say this. So when we go on these podcast tours or the porch tours, people will say, oh, well, who's your headliner? You know, and we are so lucky because I feel like we can prove that everyday people are headliners. I mean, there's so many stories to be told in Pittsburgh, and we have some really good ones this time. Did I get you to choose? We love unique jobs. Yeah. We love unique people that do unique things and right. the, today we have someone who won $220,000 on a game show yeah so I hear but she's been on two game shows I don't think you know that part I do know I did, that so, oh no you don't it's check not in your the show notes. notes is it in the notes check oh, your show notes right. I thought I did more digging <laughs> Tracy actually did the digging <laughs> um, no so this is super exciting we're going to talk to one of our favorite guests we're not just saying that because he's here but Rob Rossi uh, from The Athletic uh, we're also going to talk to who else Drew a blank. Mark Ferrari obviously uh -huh. is going right. to be our musician, and he has some really good gigs that are coming up. And we are going to talk to Liz. I'm going to mess up her last name. So yeah, I'm don't not even say, say it. it. Liz, Liz, Q. Liz, the game show winner. <laughs> Liz, the yeah, right. She makes it rain. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. We'll and she actually brought everybody two hundred twenty thousand dollars checks. So oh. everybody that's here goes home with oh a two hundred twenty thousand dollars check. Serious? Yeah, oh, I mean wow, it is crazy how stuff. generous she became after that's, winning. That's that's some right. crazy stuff. All right, I think we're going to start with Rob because the Merry Widows have made their plates because oh, thanks okay. to Ernie Richie Sausage, right. which is somebody who I forgot to thank for this porch tour. Ernie has done this porch tour every single year. Yeah, you know, and even he, last year's Ernie condensed, in, he gave us sausage just because. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, please tell him to stop. Rob, and you can come on up. The part the part about Ernie is is that you know he's very meticulous. Yeah. The sausage will be ready at 11 oh, o'clock, right not 1107, not 1059. It's 11 o'clock. And thankful to Tracy who pulls this together because we'll Ernie has not had to panic or sweat on us showing up to pick up the, the sausage. So, Well, because you text her in the morning and go, I forget. 
Yeah, <laughs> uh, did, did anybody <laughs> talk, call Ernie? Because when I was in charge of it, I'd always forget to call we know, Ernie. We know. Right. And sorry for the mix up. This is why Rachel does zero production. Rob was motioning to me, like, where do I sit? And I was like, either. And call him, like, get him to the right spot, Rachel. Get him to the right the spot. The funnest it's part about this whole thing was the phone call we get from Rob Rossi as we're setting up here. Am I oh, supposed? I it. Am I supposed to be in a cemetery? Oh boy! And the answer is yes, because yeah. that's the how question of the day for that? everybody. Oh, let me ask yeah. you, Rob. How'd you react? M- most that? of my readers think so. <laughs> um, I, I would suggest if somebody's bringing you two hundred and twenty thousand dollar checks, you learn how to say their last name. But <laughs> oh, Rob, that was the ultimate. That was the that's ultimate. That's why we're not getting well, them now. We're the disappointment. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I did not want to butcher it, so I thought we'll wait until she comes on because it's like keeping the, the suspense. Going. It's, it's an actually been thing. a running joke that since we weren't allowed in locker rooms since, I don't know, oh, my hair was like <laughs> here, um, <laughs> which actually that was only a couple of weeks ago, but um, <laughs> like every new player they get with a, a name that is even slightly difficult, it's become a joke between Josh Yoey, my colleague at The Athletic, and Sean Gentile, and it's like, Rob, you're now butchering Jones. Like it used to be like, <laughs> and it's weird because I get the Russian um, names all correct. <laughs> I'm sure um, you do. You're but used the, to it. Yeah, but they're like, Basic Canadian and American names. Um, yeah. um, Even more crazy, Rob, is that yeah. Rachel had to look at me to confirm the name because I'm always the guy who forgets the name. I yeah. did. Yeah. I was like, right. No, I actually drew a blank for a yeah. second. See why you have to see the outtakes? Because I drew a blank on our guest. And that's very, very rare. It's yeah. usually I'm the point of failure. So anyways... <laughs> Welcome back Thank to you. the yeah, Jag Off I've owed podcast. you guys a visit. I apologize. Well, so. no, this is this is so perfect timing. You guys kept calling during like the playoffs and the regular season and the draft, and I just and you were like, "Stop it!" No, Tracy. I Tracy. I think thought like, "God, this is the most impersonable guy in the world," and that's true. <laughs> um, I mean, I, you know, as I told them often, I don't like the species very much, um, uh, but I don't like individually dislike people i just don't like humans so um uh but yeah i felt bad and like i even went to get a covid test this week because i've been having an allergy flare just make sure like i'm like man if i go there like and accidentally have it and get people sick after like blowing it off three times i'm gonna be the worst guest ever (laughs) never never never. and i've got the results i'm negative (laughs) well all right see we're glad for your sake no and we're and the truth is we say this all the time, Rob, you have proven time and time again, no matter the topic, and obviously we do talk a lot of sports, but no matter the topic, if it's the the, the face of journalism changing, sports, you getting us into, remember we did the uh, pre-Penguin locker room one time? Oh, remember? right, yeah. yeah. Not locker uh-huh. room, but, you know, outside. Yeah. Of it. You prove every time to be so interesting, and that's why we want you back. And we thought, we wanted you to see what the porch tour was like because you did it three years ago. Do you I remember did. That? Yeah, I remember, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think I got evolved. lost then, too. Yeah. <laughs> No, we're going to make it more difficult. We're going to do it at night in a coal mine next time. You guys should. Oh, my gosh. That should be what you guys do, like do the uh, hidden porch tour. (laughs) Right. So, Rob, before we get started, I know we talked about this in one of the podcasts prior to this, but I still am fascinated by that even me, who has a short attention span, will read the things in The Athletic because everybody will set up social media. Everybody's lazy. They want to see video clips. They want to see lists. They want to see blah, 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 blah. The Athletic goes completely against all of that. And you guys are thriving. And it works. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm really lucky. I think I'm coming up on my third year there. Oh, wow. uh, uh, I mean, I was I was in traditional media for such a long time with, you know, a couple years at the Post-Gazette then what, 16 plus years at the Trib. And yep. um, I was at City Paper for a breath. And I, I really loved all those jobs. City Paper, I really loved. And they're doing a great job. I think you guys talked to Lisa. We just had Lisa. Yeah. yeah. Lisa, yes. Lisa should have been the person who was in charge all the time so i say my only contribution to city paper was like going in recognizing lisa should have been the one (laughs) (laughs) making sure that happened and then leaving but uh Uh um, but uh no i mean the athletics been really great it was obviously i think i think they're going into their sixth year anniversary they were a startup they they were in just chicago toronto and uh, i want to say san francisco Maybe New York, too. I thought New York. Okay. Yeah, but um, they expanded the... It was actually a funny story. They called me when I was still at the Trib and said... Um, and I had transitioned out of writing. I wanted to try my hand at management, which I uh, solely uh, recommend against anybody that um, <laughs> is, has got a background in writing or anything. Um because uh, you don't know what you're doing and you think you do and then you're like, oh, I'm completely full of it, uh, <laughs> which is usually true about most things. But now people's jobs are relying on you. So, <laughs> um, But they called me, I want to say o- October of 17. And they were like, hey, we're coming into we're thinking about coming into Pittsburgh. 
uh, do you, are you interested? We, we'd like to start with the Penguins. I was like, hell no. Um, uh, I just, I had been so, uh, I was just burnt out on just only doing Penguins. I'd been doing mm. it for that point for, you know, a couple years before even Sydney showed up. So, um, but I was like, you know, Josh Yoey, he was a good friend of mine. He was working somewhere else in town at the time. I was like, you should call him. And of course, Josh told me the money they gave him. I'm like, damn. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, about, you know, we went about two years, I think, or whatever, maybe a year and a half where it was like I talked to them and I just wasn't sure I wanted to get back into it. I mean, as you guys know, I, I don't love sports. I love writing about sports. Um, I've come to sour a good bit on journalism because it's so and I say especially during the pandemic there's just been such uh, lazy and irresponsible reporting and I don't think it's I don't I think it's become too opinion based so I was like do I you know geez do I really want to get back into this but when I you know when I decided to leave the trib um, it was just time I still have a great relationship with so many people there Jen Bertetto and uh, who, who's the CEO there and Justin Labar who's done a lot of stuff with their high school sports network you know, no two doubt. of my great friends and I, you know I just needed a change I thought I was going to go into um, I really did think I was going to go into uh, um, go back to school to try to get into uh, social work and do counseling and it's still something I'm interested in mm. one of the great things about the athletic for me has been um, I've been on our leadership team of a group that I formed. We have these various groups. We have a women's alliance group and within the company. We have a um, uh, uh, the Boondocks group, which is for uh, minorities. Oh, yeah. um, and I pushed hard for a wellness mental health group because uh, I think I've told you guys I've been, uh, you know, in 2014 I was kind of spinning. I didn't yeah. know why. And um, you're going to have to just cut me off. You guys know I talk no, to you. No, you do it. No. Um, no but, um, always welcome you know, I was, di- I was lucky. I got with a really, I got, ba- I got back into talk therapy. I got in with a really good therapist uh, named Dana Kirkpatrick. Shout out to, uh, she just opened her own business called Calm. Um, uh, it's in Pittsburgh. So, uh, but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dana's great. And it's funny. She's a, uh, uh, she's a certified sex therapist, which, which is, gives her such an, I find such a strength to being able to sort of work with you on other issues because I got into it for sort of my, why aren't I happy? And I think she just knows a way to sort of get at the root of issues because she's used to dealing with a very taboo subject. Right. And so she has a way, she had a way of disarming me Sure. and she, you know, I think about three weeks in, she's like, I want to test you for ADHD. And I'm like, there's no way I'm like the most, focused obsessed person you know um and sure enough i took the test and i failed it miserably and learned a lot like and i remember you know just the whole journey was like it was just such an eye-opening thing because i realized you know the adhd that i have inattentive you know it's it's really poorly named it it actually presents as a hyper focus and i didn't know that i had anxiety or uh uh, you know, I don't have depression, but I have anxiety that stems, fr- or I have depression that stems from the anxiety and the okay. ADHD. So when I learned about all that, I, I obviously, being obsessive, got so full into that, I thought, I'm going to go back to school and do this because there's, I remember when I went public with everything, I had a lot of people that were in the media reach out and go, I think I might have this. And mm. I was like, So well, it's kind of a characteristic. That, yeah, okay. I think, I you know, I've heard that I've heard and read the research I've done that the people that have inattentive ADHD uh, tend to be artistic. Uh, they tend to have addictive personalities. And it's like a lot of them become musicians or actors or bakers or, or anything that really requires intense focus to hone your craft. Um, and then unfortunately, a lot of them get into, you know, a substance where they that becomes their obsession. And okay. it, it pulls them into a dark place. And um I know so many journalists that go through the burnout and, you know, Rachel, you know, this too. It's just, it eats you up at a young age. And I've been lucky. I've been doing it since I was 16 and I'm 43 now. Wow. Uh, (laughs) But I mean, it didn't eat me up as quickly as it did, but it did. So I thought I was going to go into that. And, you know, when the athletic called like the third or fourth time, uh, I was really hesitant because I was really happy at city paper, but I, I, I just felt, you know what? I want to, I want to see if I can do this. I want to see if I can go back to covering sports in a way that I felt it was more me and not sort of the 
persona I had created because of the the hyper focus that I had and I would look I was just like a dog with a bone on a story and and that's great to a point sometimes then you can't back off and I and that's really what it was I never knew how I couldn't back off so I wanted to see if I could do it again and I'm when I was felt like I was in a better place as a, as a person, <coughs> is that? I, yeah. No, I'm go trying ahead. To ask this, I know. Go I'm ahead. Hold on to yours one second. I can't remember this, and I know we talked about it before. You touched on this when you were at the trip, and they were calling. Were you already aware of the athletic though? Had they because they were early? Yes, okay, I knew. So I knew. You knew the yeah. premise in which. Yeah, and they I wrote. think it was it was really like, yeah, they you know they started off as this when they started. Everybody was like, "What's a, what a terrible name?" Yeah, and, yeah, right. And and then everybody was like, "It'll never work. Nobody's gonna pay." to read stories uh you know the, our whole model is there's no advertising there we do do podcasts now but it's like it's it's not like your guys podcast right. where right. it's uh, our podcasts are more um aren't they snippets of what you've sort of covered? kind of i mean yeah. there's a few national ones honestly i'm not really involved in it yeah and i think that's one of the things i've learned there is sort of learn to love what you do and not get involved in stuff that you don't know yeah, yeah. um mm -hmm. but um, yeah, it wasn't supposed to work. They came into Pittsburgh and thankfully Pittsburgh fans being so, um, compulsively obsessed with their sports teams helped us a lot. And clearly that's why Pittsburgh was the next city, I'm assuming. Well, Is yeah, we way? were one of the next wave and we expanded, you know, um, we, at, at first it was city sites. We would go into different cities and Pittsburgh became quickly one of the top performing cities. Uh, recently we've done it differently where... It, there's still a, there's still me, Josh Oey, Sean Gentili, Ed Bouchette, and Mark Caboli, Rob Beer Temple, Stephen Nesbitt, uh, Jesse Marshall does some stuff for us. We still have a lot of Pittsburgh writers that only cover Pittsburgh teams, but because of the way the, the site works, we've gone to these what they call verticals. And mm -hmm. it's like all the hockey writers now are sort of in one. And that's it's really easier for us to like make use of our resources. When sure. I started, I think I was like one of the first. I I was like either right to get them to 100 or right over 100. And now there's, you know, 500 some employees. Oh, wow. We've expanded wow. into Europe. In that short amount of time. Wow. Yeah, so Great they've really done well and they've not gone away from their mission. Now they've, they've you know, it's a scary new world because you yes. deal with venture capitalists and, yeah. you know, you wonder like, well, how many people are going to keep signing up? But so far, I, what I'm encouraged about is I think it proves that if you, if you invest in quality and you don't just become clickbaity, people will pay for journalism. Now, the caveat there is people love sports. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I think this model would work with sports and politics. My hope would be that it wouldn't work for politics right. and uh, <laughs> would work for local news because I want to see, especially with, with everything going on in town, I mean, I grew up in the newspaper wars, you know, the Trib versus yes. the PG. I was part of both sides, and I always thought, I want everybody to stay employed. I want everybody to have, I want Pittsburgh, I want Western Pennsylvania to have these, you know, I mean, when I got into this, the trip was coming into Pitt. They had just come into Pittsburgh for about three or four years. This is like the nineties when I was still in high school. The, the press had Whatever, folded, Rob. but the Post-Gazette, but you remember like the Beaver yeah. County Times yes. was big. Yep. <laughs> the Wash, like we had all these really great suburban newspapers and the Correct. industry has just gone a completely different way, you know, uh, no offense to Facebook Live, but you guys have, You're face, right. Facebook has killed us. Uh, it's affected now the, it's affected the television industry and the radio industry. Um, a lot of good reporters have had to go to the evil world mm -hmm. of, <laughs> of comms or, or whatever, but I still think it's important that journalism in any form, whether it's you guys making, um, you know, headliners out of out of everyday people, or people doing investigative journalism. I, mean, I think of Mike Warshake and a guy I worked with for a long time at the Trib, uh, ended up working for a place based out of Harrisburg, and you know they do really important investigative stuff. So it's sports will be okay. Yeah. Yes. But but I'm glad that there's a model with the athletic that other companies might be That's able to look point. at. Well, and I think that, is, again, the other thing that goes completely opposite is everybody I listen to above my age, 
says, I ain't paying for no Post Gazette, right? right. You know, it's six ninety nine for t- 12 months or whatever. It's, you know, whatever to see it online. Well, I ain't paying. I'll just click through and not read this article because I'm out on my free. But again, you have Pittsburghers, Western Pennsylvania people who are willing to pay. And and again, it's, it is well, because it's like of the good else. writing. If you train that audience that this is the model, it's, yeah. it's going to work. And if there's an, a, a need... Or a desire for something, then it's yeah. fine demand, right? I do want to go. go I, I, sorry, I really no, think if people, you know, um, you know, the Post Gazette has some paywall stuff. The Trib has uh, pretty much a free site. Um, I think if you if you have the if you have the means, gener- donate to whichever ones you like. Donate to the ones you don't like. Um, donate to places like City Paper that that really do great in covering alternative arts and entertainment mm-hmm. scene. Um, I know Lisa's, they're always, you know, these places have people that aren't making a lot of money. Yep. It's truly a vocation. Um, it's not a vocation, I should say. It's truly a calling to most people. Um, and and as I say, you don't know what you're not knowing about really important things in your community. School board meetings, uh, county taxes. I didn't even uh, tell him to say that. Police, like all these important things. I mean, if just... You know, when when we're recording this, there's been so many videos I've seen online about people going to school board meetings about vaccine. And I don't want to get into all that. Yes, but like, right. If you don't have press access to that, independent press, you're only going to be fed one side. And as right. I like to tell people, read until you're angry and then read the people that are making you angry. Yeah. Right. Well, I, 100%, or listen yeah. or watch. Right. And do I do that. that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have to do 100% that. I agree with that. And, you know, I learned that not being a journalist, you know, by trade. We learned that through the Point Park has this PMP, yes. this, uh, this group. And, uh, you know, one of the things is that we learned through this is it's supposed to be about is Pittsburgh welcoming and that's things like this. Started. And that's yeah. kind of how it started. But the fact is somebody brought up the fact that. Who is keeping your local politicians in check? Nobody. And, you know, if because I kept saying, like, well, I guess, do I really care? I mean, the news is still there because it's online. It's just not printed. But what I understood it to be is now the local reporters are not there. There's no money to have them there. Therefore, the local politicians, the local business person who might give whatever, the philanthropist, they go completely unchecked and and without that local reporting angle. And it's it just has and not only unchecked, changed, and I agree with you, but to his point at the mind. beginning when he said journalism has changed in the sense that how many times have I said that to you? You can just insert your opinion anywhere. And, yeah. And that's not the foundation of what journalism was. Yeah. It was reporting the facts and fact checking. And yeah. that that has dissipated. And we have a lot sense. of great journalists in town. And no I question. do think. I do think the station managers of, you know, the radio and the television, and I do think the editors at all the papers, they really, they really are on the, on the just and righteous side of it. But look, there are finan- it's a business. I yeah. mean, perhaps journalism should be a nonprofit, mm-hmm. perhaps, but I mean, we're just at a time where, and again, I, I go back to the, I, I'm a sports guy and we haven't talked to any sports. I apologize, but there, you know, um, I've, I've unfortunately known, you know, too many people that have died from this. Uh, mm-hmm. I have an uncle, a friend who lost his mother. I have a friend who's in the, been in the ICU since February. Wow. He's only a couple years older than me. Mm. But I also know that, like, my f- people, my friends that are more progressive think I'm too conservative, and my friends that are very conservative think I'm too progressive, and I like to think that they think that because I'm trying to find what the facts are the and, and, and saying like, look, um, so when it comes to this stuff, I want to just know sort of basic science. And look, if you can get a sports writer to try to buy into science and math, which are not things we do well, <laughs> mm-hmm. I could never go on a show and win money because I wouldn't be able to count the money. <laughs> like I tell people, I still can't subtract. Yeah, same. I've been covering hockey for half of my life and if it's we got we count down from 20 minutes and i still can't do when the goal is scored <laughs> so that's um, why you need liz q right right, <laughs> right. So, so yeah so no so the athletic has been great and like i said the big thing they've done the one of the great things they've done is if you've had these other interests because of that mental health group yeah i know i'm yeah, rambling awesome. here no um, that it's a hallmark of adhd we just ramble so but no. that's uh that's there they've allowed me to really be a mentor to people uh, more experienced and less experienced to me within my company 
to help them because it was a really hard time. Um, we were lucky. We didn't have a ton of cuts. We did we did take some pay cuts. They've they they they've been great. I mean, right. they really have. Um, Alex and Adam, our two co-founders, have been amazing, and they are very they very much care about their employees. Mm. But we had our whole world is going places and talking to people, yeah. and I would like I think I told you or maybe I haven't. I don't know if I talked to you since it started. The pandemic happened. I was in New Jersey uh, covering a Penguins game. The week, the, 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 it was a Tuesday. That, sound, that Saturday and Sunday, they played at home. This is 2020, March. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm a high-ranking official with the Writers Association nationally, internationally, excuse me, in hockey. And we get this sort of word, okay, a locker room access is going to be cut off. This is when we're in Pittsburgh. Right? Now, up until this point, I don't think I could pronounce coronavirus. Mm-hmm. Like, it was just sure. one of those things. Right. Like, I had been to Washington recently at that point. I'd been to Toronto. I'd been to New York area. It just wasn't a thing. By that Tuesday, there had been two, two more games played after that one. I went into New Jersey that Tuesday morning. I got on a plane from Pittsburgh to Newark to fly in day of for a game, and the plane was a third full. And I went, this has never happened to me before. Mm. And the hotel, uh, the Newark Airport Marriott, was there was nobody in it. Um, and they shut down the season two days later. And I remember landing in Pittsburgh that Wednesday morning and calling my dad and saying, uh, you need to get like a thing of wipes and masks and gloves uh, for you and mom. I'm going to pick up some. And he's like, oh, you're, I'm like, dad, whatever this is, even if it's not what they're saying, people are panicking. There's going to be a run on stuff. And I, but that's the last place I had gone mm-hmm. to, and we haven't been allowed in a locker room since. Yeah. And, and we don't know, we, a month ago, I thought we were going to be, that was the NHL's right. plan. But with, with this spread, it's, yeah. it's, it's tough. So somehow we've had to adapt our jobs to basically doing interviews off of web access. And that really limits the type of stories you can get. Um, it's very frustrating, but then I also like to remember like, you know, it's also forcing me to adapt in a way that I that I wouldn't have forced myself. Yeah, so true. yeah, we watched yeah. the uh, you know the after the game the post game interviews and and uh, which is redundant after the game the post game interviews. But the, but everybody correct you everybody too. gets one in, question. Yeah, you know, red pen. I mean, Rob Ross, hey, you know. Yeah, I'll sometimes just, sneak in too. Okay, yeah. But um, yeah. it's hard. I mean, it's um, you want to and then if you have a question you really want to uh, ask. I know there's been a couple times where it's like, well, I'm not going to ask this. I'm not going to tip everybody off. There's been a couple times where, I mean, I've, there's so many people covering the Penguins now compared to when I did. And when I got in, it was like Dave Molinari, um, who's a Hockey Hall of Famer, the greatest hockey writer Pittsburgh's ever known. And, um, uh, you know, I was the young kid. And now there's the 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 kids, the guys that cover for the Post-Gazette, some of the guys that Cover. Some of the guys that have just come on to the beat, they're like, oh, we grew up reading you. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> but, um, but You kick like, them a little bit. But because I've sort of been through the, the quote-unquote grind, like there's also been times where it's like, I have to ask this question because it's the, the, the person speaking to us just said something and there needs to be a follow-up. Right. And I can't ask the question I want to ask now because I don't know that somebody's going to know to ask that follow-up. Yeah. And so, so there's a leadership role. Well, I, I wouldn't say that because I'm working against myself. Yeah, but no, I, get I think it. it's more like you want to make sure that the readers get the information. Sure. Again, it's sports. It's not that important. Um, well, but it's it is because, of the, again, the manner in which you're writing the story, you're not just reporting on the fact that there was a win and a loss and right. a couple of plays. There's literally more beef to it than. Yeah, than I don't I've never cared reporting. about wins and losses. Yeah. People, you know, I've, I think I've told you yeah. b- both that. Fans would be disappointed to realize that the people closest to the game, from the coaches to the players, even if you at the very end of that circles, the media. It's it's always about the process. It's never about the because if it's about first of all, as a media, you shouldn't care. But I'm not a Penguins fan. I'm not a fan of the Steelers. The, the, I'm an Everton football fan because I will never cover European soccer. Um, uh, but um, you and uh, Mark, yeah. But uh, <laughs> but um, I actually picked Everton because. Um, uh, Mark Madden's team is uh, yeah. Liverpool, right, right. Yeah. and I was like, "Well, if I'm going to pick no a doubt. team, I want to, I want to pick their rival." But um, 
It, it killed me too because Everton is obviously in Liverpool, and I think everybody knows I do not like the Beatles. I'm yes. a Rolling Stones guy, so but I found I'm myself rooting for a team that, like Paul McCartney, who is like, <laughs> uh, grew up rooting for. I that, heart so. Rob Rossi because I agree. Yeah. <laughs> so, but even that, like, I was excited about, and I, you know, I've had these tickets to the Stones show, and you know, my plan was to go see them a bunch of times on this tour. Now I'm kind of like. I don't know if I want to risk it because I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to harm my colleagues by possibly getting something because the first time they, if they let us into a room again soon, the first time they can go, well, a media member got somebody sick. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, um, yeah, you don't want to yeah. be the guy. And I kind of like yeah. wearing yeah. masks because it's off putting to people. <laughs> And so they'll stay away from me. So socially, yeah. like, and you're not a big smiler. No, I'm not a that? smiler. Yeah. I'm Italian. You need we to don't put smile. Keep back 500 <laughs> feet, like fire yeah. trucks on your yeah. mask. No, but I mean, like people, like has it been hard on you? I'm like, I don't like people. I yeah. don't like talking to people. Yeah. He really does. I don't I mean, like people seeing my face. Yeah. Like I can be good at this stuff publicly, <laughs> but I'd prefer to just be at home, sort of like reading. Yeah. So um, and yet we still want them back time and time. Yeah, again. you guys, I make, yeah, <laughs> we're forcing you out. Yeah. So. so we had we do have some sports yeah, questions for you. No, no, you no, did just, not ramble. No, listen, because I do want to. John's obsession want, with this. I do want to uh, talk about. Penguins. But when you were talking about your mental health and in the counseling you received from Dana, was <laughs> you were on our podcast? You talked about traveling over to Russia to hang yeah. out with M- Malkin. Was that about this? Like, did you find yourself and then well, go do that story? I first went to Russia in 2012. Uh, okay. Uh, to write us to work on our book. Uh, we're, uh, okay. we're, we're, we're writing a book. I know everybody's like, "When is the book coming out?" And I'm like, yeah, well, "When is the book that. coming out?" <laughs> Here's the thing: he's still playing. And th- the truth of the story is, when we first did the interviews in 2012, he wasn't married. He didn't have a kid. Uh, he was a different person. And now it's like, you know, he was 20, whatever then, and now he's 35. And it's like, he's got a kid. He's got a family. Like. Uh, he's gone through this massive injury. It's like there's at some point, I think it was when I went to Russia in 2019, the setup to that was um, basically he had had a bad year and he yeah. was in a pretty dark place. And the general manager, of the Penguins at the time, who uh, Jim Rutherford, who uh, he was good for the media and that he talked all the time, but he, also said some things that were just like, oh, God, shut up, Jim, please. Like, and he had said at the time, anybody can be traded except for Crosby. And, of course, Malkin's people were like, uh, Rob, we got to press him on this. Like, yes, yeah, I, okay. <laughs> so, you know, and what ended up happening that year was um, work wanted me to go talk to him in yeah. Russia. And I was hesitant because we have a relationship, and I didn't want to press it. And, I, and um, it was actually Josh that, like, said, look, you idiot uh it's the biggest story on the penguins and you're the only one that can tell it and what have you told me about the book the reason you sometimes get overwhelmed by it is because yeah that that the mental health does tie into the book thing i feel like i'm in this very privileged but pressured spot where i'm telling the authorized story of this amazing person that i've gotten to know who's this sensational talent who has lived a life where I think it's taken for granted that, you know, he comes over here. And as I said, as I've, I've Gino, as people call him, I call him Evgeny. Uh, most people around the team call him G. Gino's a character as much as Same. a nickname. Yeah, I call him Ev. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just call him Evgeny because I, I call all the players by their first name, okay. which can be a problem when you have a player that has a first name who has a nickname that is their last name. It's very, that's yeah. happened. Uh, but... You know, Gino's a character, and um, in addition to a nickname, and the Evgeny I've gotten to know is just so fascinating. This is a guy that's, uh, you know, at a very young age, his country and his hometown team over in Russia extorted him Mm -hmm. to sign a contract to force him to not be able to come over to the NHL when he wanted to. Um, He comes over here, and he's trying to, as he explained it to me, he goes, uh, you know, people shove camera in face, and I have to learn all your English. And I didn't realize and at you're first. Like, you still really are a little. <laughs> well, but here, you know, it didn't occur to me. He's coming over here and trying, yes. you know, New York English, Pittsburgh English. Yes. Mm. I mean, just within Pittsburgh English, it's yes. you know. Yeah. Well, if it is. Um, so like we're like we're the jagoffs. Like, yeah. hey, I'm getting yeah. like, yeah, and, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. And I just I was just for whatever reason I was drawn to this guy who, uh, who seemed to have another side to him. 
and in a way, I guess maybe part of me, without knowing it, we both had sort of created these personas to help us deal with whatever it was. Yeah, and yeah. So as I've gotten to know him, yeah, I think the mental health, I, you know, I, I don't want to speak for Evgeny. I know when we talked in 2019, he delved into some things about how, you know, his, his wife and son at the time um, were staying in Florida a lot where they, where they have their home in the off season, in addition to Moscow. Uh, because honestly, like there's more Russians in that neighborhood and, mm. you know, they want Nikita to grow up around people, like people. at a young age mm -hmm. um, where he can get both, you know. Sure. And, and, you know, the other part of it is, is like they have the money and Pittsburgh winter sucks. So, like, <laughs> yeah, right, um, right. But also there's other factors like if Genny's parents can only be here for a certain amount of time each year. So they try to plan their time in Pittsburgh when the whole family is going to be here. And mm. usually that's towards the end of the season around the playoffs. But that struggling year for Evgeny, which was the 2018-19 season, he talked, when I went to Moscow, you know, I remember, A, he was happy to see me, which I was surprised. I knew he wanted me over there, but I was, I just remember I called my editor that day and said, he wants to talk. He wants to, he wants to explain things, and it's not just about hockey. And we talked a lot about, you know, not, be, not having the support that he had had mm -hmm. to rely on. And also... Uh, he talked a lot about how dark Pittsburgh winters get, how rainy it gets, how he realized he was just staying inside all the time. And and I went, you know, I don't want to diagnose him because I can't. Sure. But I related to that mm. because of my own struggles. And I think it allowed me to inform the writing of yeah. that, that story. And I think I've learned, and this can be dangerous, but I think, you know, when you are aware of your own uh, if I have I have mental disorders that are diagnosed, um, some people don't. There's a difference between having depression and being depressed or feeling depressed. Yeah. Um, all these things, right? Um, and to each is their own about how they get treated in that. But I, uh, an old teacher of mine once told me when I was younger, you, you have a heartbreaking distance when it comes to your writing. And what he meant was you only go as deep as you need to to get the information. You don't want to go any deeper. Mm. And And if I had never checked into my own mental wellness, if I haven't gone on this journey, I would never have begun to go deeper mm -hmm. because as a journalist, you can get very easily trained into no feelings, no care, just report the story because somebody's going to be mad. And you can also go, you can also lean into the, the more they're mad, the more you're doing your job. And then what happens? Well, it, you know, it, you have to build a barrier to deal with that. So it becomes this vicious cycle. So, yeah, I do think something Dana has helped me with is unlocking like there's a Rob and then there's this sort of Rossi character. And um, I would say when I went into therapy, the Rossi character had taken over my life. And now it's more like, have you guys seen the Avengers movie? I have not. OK, no. there's a scene in the Avengers movie where the guy that plays the Hulk you know, they keep trying to get him to become the Hulk, the, 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 the person that becomes the Hulk. And they're like, now would be a good time to get angry because that's what makes him. He goes, well, yeah. that's the secret cap. I'm always angry. And then he just turns around and becomes the Hulk and becomes huge. And I say, that's what it's like for me. Like people like, Rob, you're angry, you're agitated. You're agitated. No, I'm actually really calm and cool. But that character can go to a very amplified place. Mm -hmm. And I've learned that I can channel that character when I need to. Mm -hmm. And it's helped me sort of find that rhythm where I'm going to have to write something tough. I'm going to have some tough questions. I can rely on that character to help me get through mm -hmm. it. But by, at, by relying on that character to ask those tough questions, getting that information, my challenge is can I dial it back so that when I write the story, I can bring a depth to it that humanizes it yeah. and, and personalizes it. And yeah. so... Luckily, the athletic gives us a lot of opportunity to write long form. It does, yeah, and and that's and well yeah, entertaining. It's I just harder it. to do when you don't have the access. Yeah. So. Well, and I realized that I actually do subscribe, and I hate when I say do before, but I subscribe, and my subscription had been out. You know, okay, I hadn't been reading it. Whatever, it's just like anything else. You yeah. go back and forth, and I realized it, and that's crazy for me because, like you said, it's sports. I have somewhat of an interest, but. You with hockey? No. Yeah, well, I know someone. <laughs> right. But then, then I, I appreciate the writing. And that's so I think that's just more of the flair. You were getting back, you know, to get back to where you guys are going with like local news and how it all ties in. I mean, I think a great story that 
applies to sports is honestly everything that's happened with the Robert Morris program. Yeah. Oh, wow. Because yeah, there's not right. enough people to cover it. No. Um, yeah, that's, that's another exactly one to keep right. it in check, and, and, right? And that's I the whole great point. And I may yeah. be I may be striking against people you have partnerships with, and if I do, I'm sorry. No but like, it's like there, it's pretty clear of the there's one person in power there that doesn't want to do this, and it's like to hell with everybody else. Yeah. And yeah. you know. They've put pressure on people in the local media that have ties to them. They're like, shut up. We want to do this. And yep. that's why I think you've seen, and look, I haven't done a lot, but a lot of people that are like in the hockey community have, when we've seen something, whether it's me at The Athletic here or John Butchergrass at ESPN who works in Connecticut but has local ties, you know, we, we've shared their tweets or their posts because we were like, look, we're not commenting on this. We want you to hear both sides of the yeah. story. Judge for yourself. That's you know? right. Um, but that's a, you know, that's that's affecting how many people. And, you know, we just got the census with all these people that, you know, Pittsburgh's grown and Western Pennsylvania's added people. And I, how, I don't know. Um, I guess they like bike lanes um, but, <laughs> or scooters. But, scooters, um, right. Scooters but, that are left on a But I think of it this way, like every kid that comes here to go to school from somewhere else that plays a sport is one kid that might stay and raise their family yeah. and help exactly. change our and community that's how for we the evolved. better. Yeah, no right. question. Well, and I always looked at that ice rink as the biggest outreach tool ever. Yes. Well, John, right? I was going mean, to say, it's like Rob Rossi with uh, conversations in John's car. Like, yeah, we had exactly. this conversation. I mean, you come here from Quebec, you come here from North Dakota to have your eight-year-old play hockey down there. You're already familiar with the Robert Morris name. Right. Yeah. Whether the kid's going to play hockey or not, right. you're familiar with this cool school. But right. Yeah, and I think it's so And that's great. my alma mater, and I hate yeah. it. Yeah. It well, it sucks. Yeah. It he sucks did. for. He it doesn't it, mean hate. It, it, <laughs> it stinks for anybody because it. You know, it's happened in so. You know, these universities. I'm so glad that the NCAA is on the verge of collapse as an organization because they have done I don't nothing know how you but. Really feel. <laughs> well, no, they've done nothing but harm student athletes. Yeah. Um, and they've you looked at every turn where they can cut cost for their own lining of pockets, um, and they don't hold programs accountable when they run really afoul. Um, whether we're talking. Uh, unpleasant things to put it kindly at places like Penn State and Baylor and stuff Damn. like that or <laughs> or just the dismissiveness with which they dismiss programs that um, women play yeah. or programs that are called the Olympic sports and as I tell people all those people that were performing in the Olympics come from college programs yep. and you know, take away the big stars. They should have been able to capitalize on their likenesses when the NCAA was doing that. People are like, well, they're getting paid to go to school. I'm like, yeah, you know what? They also don't get to go to school the way you get to go to school. Yeah. It's a year round job. So, you know, I say to hell with the NCAA as an organization because they, they stopped serving the people they were there to protect, which was the student athletes. And you're the second person yeah. this week to actually say that. And we actually mm -hmm. spoke with an athlete, a football player, who said the exact same thing. And it's it's rubbish. And they should and but that's an important local story yes. that extends way beyond local that the media doesn't have the resources it would have had twenty years ago to cover. Um, and that's one of those stories where it's like it's not gonna get a lot of clicks it's not going to get and so like the athletic is not going to cover that story because our business model doesn't it, it doesn't fit in but we need the post gazette and the tribune review um and and the beaver county times we need those places to be on this because that's how you hold a pound account the power yeah. and i the best thing about my job is i don't get to i don't have to be liked and when you don't have to be liked, you can hold people of influence to the fire. Yeah. And I think sure. now more than ever with so much, there's just so much information out there that people will just, I don't mean this as a politics thing. People with power will lie to keep power Yeah. in anything, yeah. you know, in any area of life. Right. And if we let them, It'll we're not going to learn yeah. what we're being lied to. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not lying to you when I say that. No. <laughs> Unless right. I am. No, right. You're not. Unless I am. Yeah. Rob Rossi, it is such a treat to always have you on our podcast because we know you're a sports writer, but we know you're a professional oh, yeah, it goes journalist beyond. and it goes far beyond that. So, yeah, it's cool to talk do, sports. Do you have a sports that. question? I know uh, you I don't know. It was really so, about the Malkin thing. Yeah. And did your dark space help you relate yeah. to Malkin? That's really yeah, what I it think was. answered yeah. it. You yeah. need I a dark place to be able to really get As I said, it's funny. Russians are some of the warmest people I know. 
they're just so matter of fact that they come off as cold. Mm. And it's just true. I, I, you know, and I, 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 the two times I've been to Moscow, they've, they've literally embraced me with open arms. Now, some of that's like American money, yeah, but, right. but a lot yeah. of it is they know our culture in a way that maybe is more informed than us. And we should be looking you at know. it from that perspective. I, I had a Russian, budget. I had a Russian who I didn't know well. Uh, it was just uh, the, the, the second time I was over there uh, in 2019, I was just going to this one little cafe every day to get um, what they call American tea, uh, which is they they scoff at, which they should. Okay. Um, but uh, but they, they, what she just asked, she goes, why is your country sick? And I said, what do you mean? She goes, why is your country sick? And I'm like, and this was before the pandemic. I'm like, what are you talking about? She goes, you fight just to fight. He goes, she goes, I grew up, my parents had communism. I grew up with, with not communism, and now I'm afraid to go back. And you fight for so, and she goes, you're stupid, you're foolish. You fight just to fight. Like, why is America sick? And I went, darling, I'm going to need something stronger than yeah, tea. Right. That's yeah. a, that's <laughs> a, that's but it was question. just such an interesting perspective yeah. because the more you travel, the more you get exposed to people, you find out that, like, we have a lot in common yeah. amongst us. We have yeah. a lot you know, of humans. Yeah. Yeah. No question. I think. Maybe not. No, I think I you're know. right. I think you're right. But I mean, if no not, expert. it's not going to bother me because I'll just stay yeah. at home. Yeah, because you so. hate people, yeah. right? He'll put I like right. the trees. The trees work so hard. <laughs> I've told Rob, you, you're they full of it, though. You've always been good to us. Rob, we you've asked it. us to help you with your weight control, so sitting out on Donna's porch yes. in the 90-degree yeah. weather, you're now <laughs> five me, pounds listen, lighter. Our, our guest left. <laughs> Have me with the allergies. It's not yeah. human. <laughs> I want to ask, I need to ask your brilliant musician because, like, I... I he fab. My last... Me- yes, in fact, my last... So Dana challenged me this year. We said, we're going to do... We're going to do at least one thing you've always wanted to do that you would never do. And I said, I want to learn how to sing. Now, an asthmatic with uh, lung issues uh, who has, as you, if you're seeing and hearing my voice, you're like, why, why would you think that? Um, well, because I'm alone so much at my house, by intention, I sing a lot just to myself. I said, I just want to know the mechanics of singing. So I found this, I got... Uh, I was on YouTube during some point during the pandemic. Oh there was God. this person in her name's Beth and she's in London and she broke down videos of famous songs, but from the science of singing, from the mechanics of singing. And I went through like all 200 videos in about two weeks. And I probably like got like a really creepy crush on her because of it. Like, but I was like, <laughs> I, I emailed her and I was like, this is going to sound ridiculous, but, but, I've been watching your videos. I'm fascinated by the way you explain singing with the vocal techniques. It wasn't like, she wasn't critiquing these people. She was explaining it. I said, it says you'd give lessons. I would love to take a lesson. But here's the thing. I don't sing. I've never sang. And I never will sing. Like, I play a really bad harmonica, a really bad guitar, and I can't read music. And again, I can't stress this enough. I never want to perform. I just want to learn how to do this. So I'm thinking I'm never going to. In like three months, I'd forgotten about it. And then I get a thing back from her assistant, and she's like, the assistant, uh, Tom, I should say, is like, yeah, Beth read your email, and she's wild about this idea. She thinks it's the perfect type of person to teach how to sing. So I, you know, I take the, we do it Zoom, and I, I did the first lesson, and I was like very like, I'm so sorry, I'm going to suck. I, this is not good. And she's like, you must have done something with radio or something because you know how to like move your voice into certain ranges. And I'm like, Oh no, that's the asthma. I literally can't find certain parts. But, um, the reason I said it is I've, I've, I was watching him when he performed and, uh, I was paying attention. He's probably like, why is this guy staring at my mouth and my like larynx so much? But I was just looking at it because, um, through the lessons I've continued to take, and again, I'm not singing, so don't try this. Um, but, <laughs> you uh, are a musician. Uh, maybe next time, yeah. <laughs> there yeah. you go. But um, no, I was. it was something that the pandemic, for all the horror and the misery and the tragedy, it's also given us an opportunity, I think, all of us to sort of try some things. And I have a green thumb now, yeah. thanks yeah. to Doug yeah. Oster. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not really. So I've learned... <laughs> I've learned <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I've tr- I've taken singing lessons. And I had my love arm, my arm repaired. <laughs> yeah, you did. I think I have you a did. green thumb. Yeah. All right, we have a we have a question of the day that we have to ask everybody. <laughs> okay. 
So this is a long one because it's Rachel, Rachel, didn't write Rachel it. put just, me in charge of it, and I just did a miserable I was job. I hockey so game and said, John, can you do this? You can, you can opt out and say, I want to answer my own question. But um, anyways, we're ending the Porsche tour today, which means there should be a big ending, a big crescendo. So what would your definition of a big ending of something significant be? A speech, a specific song, walk-off song, or a simple wave and a fade to black? I'm a fan of the Irish exit. Just leave. <laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm a big fan of the just, uh, I'll give you, this is my crescendo for people. Uh, and they think I'm being rude, but I, I'm just being honest. Although I can see why it comes off that way. Usually if I'm in a conversation with somebody and the conversations reach the point where it's like, we're now just extending this. I'm yeah. like, all right, well, I'm sure some of you want to continue this, but I don't. God, and I God. leave. Oh my God. And so hell. like, and people are like, that's kind of mean. I'm like, is it? Because... It's now honest. you can go talk to other people. Yeah. And so I'm a big fan of just the abrupt ending. Be honest. I like, I like yeah. the fade okay. that like... I would have thought really it was good. the fade. Yeah, yeah, yeah that that's really good. Yeah. 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 Also, like fireworks, I'm colorblind. Dude. Oh my God. Things, Dude, like, I, I, am, I am Homer Simpson into the hedges. So yeah. for my, I would just... You oh, are. Like, you guys, that you guys should try it one day in the podcast. Just do like the hard exit. Oh, he's when, done that. When nobody's events. counting on it. And it's like... I do. I find the rest of quickly. It's a thrilling thing, isn't it? Yeah. Because people yeah. remember that. They're no. like, what the heck was that? I have 46 conversations on my way out. I'm still talking on yeah. my way out. Hard, right. hard right. exit. The Irish uh, exit. Yeah. Rob, you're funny. the best. We're bringing you on more often. And we'll, we'll on keep the, having Tracy ask yeah, Tracy. Tracy. On the Don't end, be Tracy, on the send me another video hear. of how to get somewhere. <laughs> you're right. I'm like, I'm driving. How can I look at the video? I'm going well, to like, uh, I'm going to, I literally, well, I'm trying to look at this video in the cemetery and I'm like, if I die crashing into a hit, it like would be a, you, like you a, a stone. Yeah, no. Like, I'm going to be so angry. I'm going to haunt them so hard. So I called, and luckily, John, you answered. Yeah. But I was well, like, the, the funny part the is, is that we were making the video, and I had to take the audio out because of Tracy and Rachel's comments about, hey, John, look at this car. Oh, my God. So I took out the answer. Anyway, it was so. the best. It was the literally Whatever. best comment I've ever had to start a conversation. Like, great. Hi, should I be in a cemetery? <laughs> yeah, like, that was, that was a good segue. That yeah. should be the question of the day. Yeah, yes. Should I be? Rob Rossi, where does everybody find you online? Yes. Uh, the Athletic. Ha you can download our app. Uh, you can go to theathletic.com. We're always running uh, special discount subs. Uh, we probably will be doing that at the beginning of the year. Um, like I said, if you like Love sports, it. you get not just access to the Penguins. You get access to any team we cover. Um, and... Um, they're great stories. Also, like, like I said, please uh, support us by all means. Donate to City Paper, the Post Gazette, the Tribune Review. Take care of all my friends at those yeah. places. Um, subscribe to your your jag off. Uh, I love it. You yeah. threw that in. Yeah. Yeah. Look at and then don't bother me. Seriously. Yeah. If you see me on the street, yeah. just be like, Walk away. he doesn't like you. Walk away. Just, he's not sick. Mark he's Madden like, is a nice <laughs> dude compared to Rob. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Coming I up, a real loud. Coming awesome up, we're going to listen to Mark Ferrari, and then we're going to listen. We're going to talk to Liz, the game show host winner. Boom. And Mayor. Bring cool. Mayor up, Rob. That was awesome. I'm Thank so you. Sorry, so I talked. No, so oh my God, you're fantastic. Are you okay? No, I do this to them every time. I'm it's like, perfect. I, like, I go 40 minutes, it. and we're like, you haven't asked one damn sports. No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not. Yeah, it's not no, all no. About it was perfect. The best thing is, is, like, I will lose my voice after this so yeah. hard that like my mom will call later, and I'll be like. I can't talk, Mom. What's wrong with you? Like, I just did a podcast. I was on a podcast. That's okay. It's worth it. My voice went out during a during a during a Zoom interview this year. Uh, I was, uh, it was like early in the season and I had, I was I, like, I am now I was on prednisone and it just I, literally in the middle of asking a question, I was like, so Mike, I, uh, oh my God, people like, oh, was it audio? I'm like, yeah. I can't talk. Oh, They're like, are you choking? I'm like, I'm not choking. Voice is just gone. Oh, They're like, God. what do you do? I don't know. Jesus. Like, it was just like, you know, uh, yeah, that's just, like, not good. Well, yeah, the only good news is, is Donna Kane, our host here, has put out so much food. Yes, yeah. she is, they, they, yeah, it'll feed your prednisone. I, 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 I <laughs> would, but it's weird. I, um, prednisone makes everybody else hungry. Like, I don't want to eat at all. Oh, so. is that right? Oh, oh my yeah. God. That's the all next. Right. We'll, talk about, we'll talk about how we'll mental about health meds next time. Yeah, yeah right. We'll nice. screw with you that way. But, uh, all right. Thank Liz, you, guys. Come on in thank here. You, thank you so much, Rob. Liz, you can sit there or there and wipe whatever you'd like to do. We have wipes we have. Please make them say your name. stuff. Yeah, uh, it's, right yeah. okay. Can you? I'll wipe for you if you'd like. You're fine. Go. Just, Are you out? So good yeah. to see you. Okay. No, no. So understood. Right. Thank, right. Thank you. So Actually, Colin no, will right. just get a quick yeah. video of you. Yeah. Sorry, my ability to open that. 
Kill. Absolutely, John had a hard time. Take the outside edge. Thank you, I appreciate it. And I do remember you now. It's just you know. I know we're sorry. Me? Well, no. I, I actually I loved that event. I still. Thank you. I still. Uh, that's how I met. Uh, All right. <laughs> it's not. Uh, it's not every day that we have someone who won a lot of money let alone has been on a national game show. We've literally never had anybody that's been on a national game show on our podcast Nebs. yet. In Nebs. five and a half years, have never done that. Yeah. So, Liz. I'm just asking, Trace, can I have some water? I'm handing you my cup, actually. Thank you. You're the best. I love Tracy. I'll she edit that out. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it's behind the scenes. That's what it's all starting. about. It's, that's sorry. what it's all about. Okay. No, do it. I'm, I'm good. So go Do ahead. it. <laughs> You said, oh, so you. never in our time have we ever interviewed someone who won a game show. I mean, and you keep ch joking that she's going to share the wealth. I mean, God love her. She shouldn't have to. She just keeps going game show to game show and making Pittsburgh a better name. We're best of for all these things, and now we have the best game show winners. <laughs> Listen, Liz, this is the only time I felt more prepared than Rachel for the podcast oh. because she always does the show notes, and she had a hockey tournament today. Ah. So I had to do the show notes, but I still did not prepare as well as she did because I don't know how to say your last name. So welcome to the podcast, Liz. Canal. Canal would yes. have never gotten that no, out of there. No, nobody ever does, so unless you're a French teacher. Nobody. Oh, you know okay. what? I thought it was Canal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was going that route, and then I was like, I don't want to show everybody up, you know? <laughs> Listen, Liz. Oh, my God, is that too We th Tracy is our, like, go-to person, right? She sends us things for the Daily Dose of Happiness, mm -hmm. as well as the podcast, and says, like, you have to get on this person. And she has been on your tail. I mean, she <laughs> knew what was going on. But John dug a little deeper. And but Tracy says she already knew this. You are a game show winner twice yes. of two different game shows. Yes. And you're you're not technically from Pittsburgh, but you're here and you're doing great things because you're a small business owner. Correct. So you start. I'm not even going <laughs> to go into that. I'm not asking you questions. Tell us about this. So um, I moved to Pittsburgh in 2011. So I've been here just uh, over 10 years All now. Right, you're a decader. I'm a decader. All right. So, um, Fair enough. I'm getting I'm getting close to permanent resident status, I feel. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have no plans ever to leave. I love it here. Do you you use um, the word Jagoff. I do. Okay. I do, but okay. but I will say that I moved here from Chicago, who oh. also Stop. uses the word. We've had that fight. I, I yes, we've had there. that fight. I right. do not want to go we there. Had that's that been a that's been yeah. a tug of war. Mm -hmm. It's a thing, but I but I was familiar with the term mm -hmm. moving here, so it did help. Well, here's the good news: we, as you hear, are not Yinzers. We use the term Jagoff as a term of endearment. Yes. So there you go. Exactly. I, okay. Yeah. In addition to the other ways, yes. <laughs> when John's driving. <laughs> yes. Right, go ahead. Right. Which is the perfect time to use. <laughs> right. So you've been here. I've been here 10 years. Uh, um, I moved here because my family lived here, and they moved here when I was in college, like a bazillion years ago. I'm yeah. 47. Uh, and I always liked when I came to fi visit them. I thought the city was beautiful, the people yes. were nice, it was cool, and my husband and I were just looking for something different. So here you are. Here we are. We okay. were able to come here, and, and because it's more affordable, we were able to buy a lovely house. I was able to start a business, and everything's going great i just love it i'm like the biggest cheerleader my friends keep saying that i need to work for like the tourism board oh my god it's gosh. like my facebook yeah, i'm always like come pittsburgh. to pittsburgh. Uh -huh. visit pittsburgh do you know liz that our next week's podcast is inside an air-conditioned uh She's well like, environment yeah, it's you. not i know i am so, so mad about yeah, yeah. that <laughs> tracy why didn't you ask me to be on the <laughs> next week <laughs> like, forget it yeah, so, so talk us through i'm sorry no, you talk us through the process so the Two different game shows. Name them. So I was on Jeopardy in 2015, and I was a, Jeopard a one time Jeopardy champion. Uh -huh. And then I was most recently on The Chase, uh -huh. uh, which is a show that's on ABC. And that just aired in June, and I won $220,000. And the best oh part about God. this is, is that we watch Jeopardy and see all these different people win it. Mm -hmm. And they're like meek and kind of humble and all that. And the guy oh, yeah, you John beat is the winner that I dislike the most because he is the one winner that seems to have like I am the guy. Yeah, John's like I and love you her. beat him. <laughs> so I say like, yes. Now he's a jagoff. Yeah, yes. Uh, I when I when we went on to the show. So I didn't know my teammates. We go, sort of go into the studio just meeting each other for the first time and you don't know who the chaser is until the game has started and they bring them out okay so i did see this okay, okay. they they did ask us which it got edited out but they did say you know is there anyone you don't want to face and of course i was like 
oh, no, I'm not afraid of any of these guys sort of thing. But in my head, I was going, oh, God, please. Don't let it be him. Don't let it be him. Don't yeah. let it be James Holtzauer. And <laughs> as soon as uh, Sarah, the host, started talking, I was like, you know, he holds the record for eight of the most, you know, highest bank days on Jeopardy. I went, oh, son of a B. Yeah. So then uh, he walked out and uh, I will say he was the one I wanted to face the less, the least, but beating him was the most satisfying oh, in a way God, that yeah. beating the other guys would not have Okay, done. I want yeah. you to finish this, but I ha I'm afraid I'm going to forget this question. Does this give you pressure in life to feel like people put you under a microscope? Like, how do you speak? How do you can, like, have you have you felt this pressure since winning? Because I think you're super smart and I've, my po my posture has been better just being around <laughs> you because I feel like you've, you've mastered something that most people pretend that they could do. And like three questions in, we lose. Um, you know, I do feel a weird pressure, but it's it's generally that I'm not going to live up to other people's expectations. Oh, People okay, assume that sure. I'm going to be some sort of, you know, Einstein level yes. genius. And while I'm smart, that's not really the sign of a good trivia person. Trivia people are really curious. That is hands down the most important that's true. Th yeah. thing you need to be to be good at trivia. Okay. Um, and the second is I have good recall okay. and quick recall. And that is something that you're kind of born with or you're not born with, but you can improve upon John, I could go on a game show. That's what's happening. Women have it. I mean, God Women knows. Do. Rachel, yeah, 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 like, much faster back recall. four Thursdays ago, you said this. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> the Rolodex. <laughs> exactly. And that's how I ex actually, a, a psychologist explained this to me. <laughs> okay. That um, people who are good at trivia, their brain works like a filing cabinet. Like they don't have to go through any sort of circuitous, cir I, I can't say that word again. I Not can't. that Circuitous. smart. Circuitous. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, and they just go and they pull out the file. As soon as they ask the question, yes. ding, the answer is Abraham Lincoln or yeah. whatever. Um, and most people do have to like go through these steps, even if they're unaware of that they're doing them. Oh, I learned about presidents in the fourth grade with Mrs. Smith and sure. this. And the, so the 16th president was Abraham Lincoln. Sure. Yeah. Um, and that happens fairly quickly, but we can avoid doing that That's altogether. Me. That that part is me because Rachel will go to, Come on, John. Yeah, just, <laughs> zero patience. She'll be like, no, That'd answer be. this question. And yeah, no, it's funny. So now. So you're there. You see yeah. that it's him. What's mm -hmm. that like? Um, terrifying. I yes. mean, the, the, the set is sort of built in a way to be intimidating. He's up on this giant oh, really? game yes. board yes. piece. Um, the lights, the sounds, it's all. It's just a lot. Um, the game starts out, I was the first player to go. So it is a combination individual and team game. Um, and I did the cash builder round first, which is rapid fire one minute. Question, 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 question. Um, I, as of right now, the whole season has not aired, but as of right now, I got the most right of any contestant in the cash builder, which is 10 questions in Bill a minute. Go Pittsburgh. Um, and so that, allowed me to have the potential to bank a hundred thousand dollars but then i went to face him and he, the way the game works is i could have taken that hundred thousand i played for that hundred thousand yes yeah 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 um and been f five steps away from being safe i could have played for twenty five thousand and been four steps away from being safe or i could have played for three hundred thousand and been six steps and he'd be like basically right behind me okay. which meant that if i got one wrong he got one right he could catch me um i lost my mind temporarily and decided to go for the larger amount right. uh, which worked out for me so now did you, you go did you know exactly that, yeah. i kind of did did you know the game uh, as far as how to plan your strategy um i yes i'd watched the game before it had okay. been on one previous season um in the current format it had also been on in a different sort of slightly different version on the game show network um so i was familiar with how the I game was that. played but most people um tend to go for the middle amount but funnily m a lot of people would have gotten the larger amount that's what, what the producers kept trying to impress upon us like in the pre-production meeting you know a lot of people would have gotten that larger amount Got so it. don't be that afraid yeah don't be that person don't be that person yeah. and so Where was i just this was like la oh, okay. okay la it was filmed in may um, I was happy that it aired in June because I would have had to keep my mouth shut I was, about it. I was just about it, asking that question. Yeah. My husband knew the outcome of it, but nobody else. I, you know, it's, yeah. Yeah, you're sworn to secrecy. Right. So that would have been really, really right. tough. Could you do that? No. 
<laughs> it was it was very difficult. So every so often I'd just look at my husband and go, "I beat James Holtower," and he'd go, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, "I know, okay, you're, you're I know." My hero just for that. <laughs> yeah. So what did um, Pittsburghers, if they want to get on game shows or whatever? I mean, is I know they always say if you want to be, yeah. you know, go online and you know and take tests or whatever. Mm-hmm. But what what do people do if they want to get on, even Jeopardy or or you're familiar with others? Well, the important thing is first of all to. To, uh, to try out. You're not going to get on if you don't actually try anything. Yeah. Um, Jeopardy is a great place to start because they do have the online test and it's now an anytime test, which means you can take it at any time. You don't have to wait for the set dates to take it. Sure. Um, the, so you submit that and usually they don't tell you how many you have to get right out of the 50 timed questions. Um, it's generally believed to be about, you need to get about 35 right to get into the pool of potential contestants. Um, I have found that for me, I think that being from Pittsburgh has helped uh, in the sense that basically they don't want a bunch of contestants that are all from LA and New York and Chicago, uh, okay. right? So being from a, a smaller market, yeah. a different market, yeah. being a woman has helped, owning a makeup store has helped. Like uh, they look for diversity in all mm-hmm. facets. And that doesn't mean if you are not a member of any um, particular diverse group, you shouldn't audition, but... Uh, but it definitely, like, if you think, you know, oh, I have something a little different to offer, what then it's a good opportunity. A like, I know, right? Like Jonah, Rachel. 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 Uh, every like, movie question, you'd this? have to take every movie question yeah, because I would be know so none of them. I know. Well, if you ever need a trivia, like, I'll be a ringer. Like, if you ever need, <gasps> well, like, she's our trivia right. coach. Wait, why don't we have you jag off trivia? And just we'll edit this part of the podcast out, and we'll yeah, just show gosh, up with her. Listen. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's such a good point. I want to win something. I know, but right? that's awesome. And then, so you also were on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? I was, and I wa- I won thirty thousand on that one with Regis. Uh, I was not. Meredith? I was no. I w- actually with Chris Harrison. Oh, that's the new new. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so I was that aired in twenty nineteen. Okay. Um, and I didn't do as well as I had wanted on that show, but I think the lesson from it actually helped me in the chase because um, I knew the 50, the question that was like going for 50,000, but I was not super confident. Um, and I kept thinking, you know, if I get this wrong, I drop back down to $5,000 and I, you know, wagering $25,000, which is a, a large Jeez. sum of money. Yeah. And um, so I chickened out basically. And yeah. I think that and I would have gotten it right. And yeah. I think that helped with the chase me saying, okay, I'm going to be confident and I'm oh. going to go for this higher amount so because cool. I can do it. That yeah. is, yeah. It's I'm not going to so let this happen cool. again where I regret something. Yeah, yeah. So then you come home and it's like back to normal living, right? You're a small business mm-hmm. owner. Um, you had the business. Talk about your business a little bit. So it's called the Gilded Girl Beauty Emporium. Yeah. It's a makeup, skincare, fragrance boutique in Sewickley. Um, I used to be located in Lawrenceville. Uh, so if the name sounds familiar to anybody. And I carry beauty products from around the world that have generally not been available in Western Pennsylvania. Um, I, in fact, go on buying trips around the world. Uh, in 2019, I was fortunate enough to go for six weeks, literally around the world, looking for brands and wow. unique ingredients. Um, so we went to uh, London, Wales, Morocco, Turkey, Japan, Johnny. New Zealand, Tahiti, then LA, and then back here. So it was yeah, well, amazing. Just pretend that like we, she sponsors, and we just have to go with. Yeah, her we go with her. Like yeah, that. there has to be a Steeler that's bar fine. in at least it's four fine. of those. Yeah, uh, yeah, there. Yeah, uh, <laughs> every place has the Steeler <laughs> bar. <laughs> yeah. Literally, yeah. Any, every city you go to, you see, you know, yeah. Steelers yeah. gear. Oh my God, that's amazing. So, so by day you're doing this, and yes. or is that or is your are your hours for your business more by day or are they more by evening and weekend because that's when your clients are available? Um, my, my hours are uh, Tuesday through Saturday and usually I'm there 10 to 4. Which are um, boutique but hours I, anyway. I, yeah, 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 I'm boutique They're hours, but okay. I do a lot of, of makeup services as well, which yeah. are tend to be in the evenings. Um, I are do you classes. a makeup artist? I am a makeup artist okay. as well. So do you do like girls for weddings and things yeah, like that? I do, that. exactly. See, I know yeah. a little bit about exactly. this Exactly. See? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do I've lived through it. <laughs> He's like, I know about this, Rach. She's like, clearly you don't wear makeup. I'm, I've now hit my limit of what I know. <laughs> Wait, do you permanently put eyelashes on girls? Oh, no, or no. Volkswagen's? I don't do the permanent. I don't do <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> I don't do the permanent. I do want a perm. Okay. Let's talk about that real quickly, though. I did ask for that for my 45th birthday and did not get it. Permanent eyelashes. No, you're not listening. Perm. Oh, like a p- perm. A, 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 your, a, your eyelashes. So oh, eyelashes. Oh, see, remember? I didn't know that. I did tell you. Melissa had it done. Perm. She got her eyelashes perm, perm which eyelash. just keeps them curled. Mm-hmm. And then for 10 more or 15, I forget what it is, it's tinted to the color mm-hmm. of your, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. 
See, we, well, she see, I told you I hit my limit on the first question. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I'm not, I don't feel like any kind of it's failure. It's less maintenance, though. Yeah. From what wow. It is. It is definitely yeah. less maintenance, yeah. and it doesn't... Um, I mean, it doesn't give you, like, the thickening effect of, like, a mascara or whatever, but it's great if you just want something that yeah, your eyelashes you it, are John. really light. Oh, Less God, Volkswagen. Yeah. Listen, I don't, only because when I was younger, when I was younger, everybody always told me I had great eyelashes. So, mm-hmm. like, you know, before I wore glasses, it blocked them This is where you compliment him. Right. No. You do have <laughs> no. great eyelashes. Look at those I'm eyelashes. Bad, those oh, my the goodness. On that dude. <laughs> 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 Whoever hears that, right? <laughs> I don't have any abs to look at. So. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> anyway, so how has it changed your life? I mean, that's the million-dollar question, um, right? You know, being in trivia, one, one of the things I've learned was that there's a huge trivia culture in this country that oh, I was for completely sure. unaware of. You know, yeah. everyone does, you know, bar trivia or this, but like there are groups devoted to trivia. Like but high end really? trivia. Yeah, high yeah. end trivia. And I had no idea. So now I'm part of like, I have all these like online trivia groups that I'm a part of. Um, I participate in two um, weekly online quizzes, one with my team that is built of women from all over the country. Um, one is an individual event. Um, I play one. I'm about to start playing one um, with in the UK. Um, so I'll have to like be doing it on my lunch break at the store. Uh, and that's also an individual trivia. Like it's really cool. And people like um, uh, Matt Jackson are like really famous sort of J- Jeopardy celebrities like participate in these like they're very high level so there is a method there's a yeah, formula it's a gym it's a it. trivia yeah. gym it is, a right? trivia gym. Yeah. Yes, it is. i mean you're just like any anything else you have to like just keep yeah. working at it let's go to, to a podcast gym just, I wonder it's oh yeah <laughs> um, but did you did you know that you were like a trivia junkie prior like is that what sort of yeah i've always used your liked um like i was i grew up I watching the Jeopardy. Junkie, like no i know what you, you know mean. what i mean um no, I, I always watched Jeopardy growing up. Um, I participated in, you know, high school quiz team, and and I took Latin. And there was a, a it's called Latin Cartomen, which is basically Latin quiz team, yeah. right? Liz, you're smart. Just stop. Like I can so, tell you're you're above me here. Sister. No, I'm back no, to feeling inferior. <laughs> no, I'm back I, to the I, you know what? The, the best part about Liz is she's a right around like your age. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's okay. Yeah. We really felt awful when this uh, non-graduated Pitt student came on and said she invented some kind of new gum. Oh, no, see, yeah, we were, no, that's yeah, cool. like we really yeah, felt like, like we were totally in inadequate. Her bedroom. Yeah, in her yeah. bedroom. Yeah, in her bedroom. Yeah, that that those are people that who have like <laughs> brains that I can't. <laughs> I can just. I'm basically just a computer spitting out. <laughs> <laughs> I can't like, actually come up with my own ideas. No, uh, no, oh my god, and it's so cool. Like I'm brainwashed I'm, Catholic school, and I don't know Latin. <laughs> <laughs> I literally have never met anybody that's been on a game show. This this is totally cool. Like, yeah, and you're and so down so to fun. earth. I love what's it. What's it like? So just before we let you go, but like, what's it like? You know, people see it all very streamlined. Mm-hmm. But are there gaps in the questions? And they're like, hold on, let's start that it's over. Again. Yeah. That kind so of thing. in um with Jeopardy, Jeopardy is filmed basically in real time. When there's a commercial break. They okay. stop tape oh, okay. and they, you yeah. know, powder you and give you some water. And if something needs to be reread occasionally, you know, they wouldn't get good audio on a question or whatever. Um, and I was lucky enough to be on there with, when Alex Trebek was hosting. Oh, oh my um, God. I didn't want to ask that. Wow. Like, yeah. yeah. And, and so, you know, he would be, he would use that time to just sort of re-record things. But um, yeah, each episode no longer than 35 minutes um, Just to like film. Just like Saturday Night Live shows it. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then um, the chase there were some stoppages, just, you know, audio glitches or light issues or, double or checking. whatever, yeah. double checking. Yes. I'm yeah. um, actually one of my um, cash builder questions was, uh, I don't remember exactly how it was worded, but it was essentially, you know, what is the smell after what, what sort of um, meteorological event um, produces the smell petrichor? Or what you know, do you know what petrichor is? No. Okay, so petrichor. Again, is, see, she keeps doing this. To did me. you guess? Lightning. Yeah, it's rain. It's a th- I said thunderstorm. It's technically rain, so it's a smell after a storm. Okay. That's called okay. petrichor. Okay. You learned something new. So I Terry from the had said thunderstorms. She immediately said no rain, and then but they went back and they were like, we're gonna take that. But they oh, so they stopped oh, play cool. to like determine Look if they at were her behind if that the scenes. Ah, that's cool. Wow. Then do you take multiple clothes out there to change each day uh, if like you're Jeopardy, gonna do? You do Jeopardy. You take three outfits because okay. they assume they film it all like 
a one week and one day on Jeopardy. Uh, okay. Um, and they assume that nobody remembers Thursday, which you wore Monday, if you happen to be like a, uh, a, yeah, right. a four game yeah. person. Um, but then the chase <laughs> is just one and done. Day. So, I mean, I did have a couple of outfits for them to choose from that had been cleared yeah. in the photograph with their wardrobe department. Okay. But And then they ultimately decided, like, based on what my other teammates were wearing, like, so that we didn't look ridiculous up there together. Totally ends our question. Do you pay for your own hotel or do they do that? Uh, they paid for it. So the difference between being on a um, network game show and a syndicated one like Jeopardy is Jeopardy, you have to pay your way out there. That said, Jeopardy guarantees $1,000 even if you're in third place. So that would oh, offset okay. pretty much your trip to LA. Okay. Oh, that's um, nice. I didn't know that. Yeah, but the chase, like, you don't get anything if you lose. Yeah. But they do pay for you to go out there, your hotel, per diem, uh, transportation, okay. all oh, that that's sort of thing. So, so it works so out. It works yeah, out, yeah. John, use the word petrichor in a sentence. Petrichor. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get Wait, I'll ask Terry. Terry, what is petrichor? That's a question. There you and then go. Terry will answer it. It's the smell after the rain. Oh, there you yeah, go. Yeah, and I, you know, and with all the rain we've been having, you have oh, ample easy. opportunity. Oh, to use tonight. Oh, wait till tonight when I'm drinking beer friends. with my buddies. I'm like, smell I smell petrichor. petrichor. Like, Do you smell petrichor? Like, I like, love the smell up. of petrichor in the morning. You know, that sort of thing. <laughs> right. That's right. Uh, that's, Liz, you were a gem. Yeah, I, this truly, was totally cool. You're great. I you appreciate it. Get. Where does everybody follow you and find your store so that we can come patron you as well? Oh, thank you. Uh, my store is again called the Gilded Girl Beauty Emporium. It's at 408 Beaver Street in Sewickley. Um, I have a website, www.com thegildedgirl.com um, and you can generally find me at random trivia nights around town. Yeah, I love it. I love it. You yeah. are, you're awesome. <laughs> yeah, thanks. You're yeah. Up there. You're thanks for driving stature. out and sitting yeah. in the sweat right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, She's like, thanks for nothing. She I know. I'm thanks. impressed by like your Thank complete you. lack of Sweating. Are you dehydrated? I don't know. <laughs> no, I have to pee so badly. I'm on my fourth glass of water. I have like, to pee. As a skincare professional, I need to talk to you about Thanks. this dryness. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. That's the way to learn me. Yeah. All right, our That's question of the day. Oh, yes. Do you want to ask oh, it? Question of the day. Go ahead. You can do it. You no, you do it. it. Nope, it's yours. All You're right. the originator. Okay, I have to find it. Hold on a minute. We're ending the porch tour, which means there should be a big ending. So, what would be your definition of a big ending? Of anything significant. Is it a speech, a specific song, or a simple wave and fade? Um, well, see, I have a degree in theater, so I'm kind of leaning towards, like, the big show-stopping Me number. Too. Like, I can hear that theater in you, gonna, sister. You're yeah. uh, yeah, I'd be like, exactly. I gotta, I gotta give my regards to Broadway. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's just off the buffalo. Yeah, sort of thing like happening, like you know. I like, <laughs> I like her. Awesome. She can hang out with us. <laughs> Where does everybody find you on the internet? Did we ask that? Yeah, Gilded Girl. Oh, is oh social media? Yeah, social oh, media. Oh, well, I have uh, Instagram. That's the Gilded Girl. Yeah. Um, I have Twitter, which is at Liz Cannell or Karaoke yeah. Queen. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Unlike, unlike your previous guest, I like to sing in public. Yeah, so. same. And do I don't do care it. what it sounds yeah, like. Yeah, exactly. Kind of. Yeah. If Mark needed care. a duo, I'd be up there. I'd be fist fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, we're going to hear Mark Ferrari <laughs> coming up next. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Thank you. No, I appreciate it. This was fantastic. You were great. So yes. Thank you so much. Come on, Mark. All right. Mm. And then uh, Mary. Yeah. Mary yeah. Larry, Larry never showed up, right? Is this the playing or the talk? Uh, you talk. You're yeah, you talking, can. And you can wipe if you want. Uh, there are wipes over there. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. I just didn't know if. Yeah. All right. All right, here we go. So, no, you talk because I'm going to get some water. I'll get you water. Uh, this will be my fifth glass. I'm going to have to pee. Seriously. Do it. All right, Mark. This is what I love about you. So we <laughs> saw you at our poor, our uh, fireplace tour, which was outside, though, ironically, was, yep. at Chris Murphy's, dear friend of both of ours. Yes. And, um, and technically, we should say that Fusion actually is the reason that you're here. So thanks to Fusion Entertainment today. But, you know, the cool part about Mark is we have this history where you've you've – been performing for a lot of years with bands and solo mm -hmm. and now you are a teacher yes. by trade yeah. but then you've continued your passion and you're doing some big things talk about some of the stuff that you're going to be doing coming up well as far as um the music goes I've, I've been writing and recording for probably 10 15 years now and that's led to a lot of opportunities um I've been working closely with uh, brian drusky Oh with yeah, Entertainment. right. So once we connected, yeah, he's using me for a lot of the big shows that have come through. So um, the, one of the bigger ones uh, coming up will be October seventh with Uncle Cracker, 
And I did a show with Uncle Cracker two years ago. Yeah, just a little yeah. name drop. You talked about this the last time, yeah, and we I mean, were like sort of envious. So we we yeah. we could actually come, right? Because where oh, is yeah. it? Yeah. Where yeah. Is it? It's, it's at Jurgles. Okay. Yeah, the, I'll be doing a half hour opening, oh. all original music. I love that's Uncle Cracker. Awesome. Yeah, dude. Yeah, 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 I just yeah. It's good yeah. music. It's fun. It, it that's know? it. Yeah, and you know we were saying on a previous well a lot of the podcast leading up, and we definitely want you to go back to what you're doing. But mm. the coolest part about musicians today is that there's not this genre that you identify with. I mean, not that you don't. Mm -hmm. But there's such a blending anymore that you don't say, oh, well, I loved the Motown era or right. I loved country only. There's like, even in the song you did at the at the beginning. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what I would classify. Yeah, it's, it's Daughtry, uh, man. Everything's so intertwined. You know, yes. all these artists from different genres are doing collaborations. Yeah. So like you don't even know what album to buy that from or, you know, yes. what album is it on? So I think music's becoming more and more like I don't want to say one, but there's elements of all the styles in a lot of the genres. Yeah, you know, so. no, that's so true. No, I think the song that we're hearing in between each of the guests sounds a lot like Daughtry. Okay. You know, and you were I don't know if that's a compliment like or not. As soon as you walked in, you <laughs> <said you laughs> I, I do, I get that all the time. Yeah. And, and no, I, I think it's, yeah, yeah like for sure. I, I think it's, I'll take it as a compliment. You yeah. Know? yeah. But I've been, I, you know, I've been doing this before I even knew who Daughtry who was. Who he was, that's he right. Out, yeah, so. that's right. But, you know, I love and the you're comparison. Like, and you're like, I did it the real way, too. I Right? I didn't win a contest. I know, but I would have taken it, though. Yeah, that's true. That's so true. What, what, so you are a teacher. What advice do you give? I mean, you know, it seems like, you know, parents, they're pushing their kids even more to be a professional athlete. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, they want them to be free and, and exercise their creativity and things mm -hmm. like that. But we just know every kid's not going to be a rock star. Right. 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 And, and playing the guitar is not going to get you millions of dollars. But mm -hmm. so what advice, because you've been kind of up the mountain there, mm -hmm. you know, you have a pretty good trajectory there. What advice do you give to kids knowing what the parents are about to say when they go home? You know, the parents right. aren't typically practical right 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 I think <laughs> parents should give their kids all the opportunities to try everything you know get them out there in sports get them out there in music have them play an instrument and also let the kid have some, the student child have some input on what they think they might want to do and let them try it right you know it could be fishing it could be hunting, it could be anything but expose them to everything and then let the let the child decide what avenue they want to take as far as you know those those passions like in the end you you want to be happy you know you want to be able to provide right. for yourself but you have to do something that you're passionate about or you're just going to burn out yeah you have to love what you do well now, and i think right and it, and i know where you're going with parents and such the reasonable but, expectation kind of thing right? right but sometimes it's the opposite where parents or children assume that because they weren't good instantaneously that it's not worth it and that's mm -hmm. not true either because just because you point. don't sound you know what i mean mm -hmm. just because you don't sound good initially doesn't mean that if you love it then work at it i mean yeah. that's just another point you know what i mean like You're right, right you know it's 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 both sides really because i mean you can't tell me the first time you picked up a guitar you were oh i was just so good i mean no, no one's a natural prodigy N no uh, i was just for example i was up at deep creek this past week and i haven't water skied in 20 years and i was trying to teach uh this uh, my girlfriend's son how to do it and I couldn't even get up yeah, but right. I, after six seven times I finally got up and and you know and I, you could quit like that and never even that's right get up and, yes and then but so you know it's just about you got to keep trying yes you know if you love it you'll keep trying no um, doubt but you got to do what makes you happy that's yeah right. well uh, yeah I certainly, happiness, you'll keep going after that's it. it yeah, yeah. You know? I certainly agree with that talk yeah. a little bit about Drusky because they're great people as well we were we were having a conversation not too long ago about how you need to know Drusky to kind of get some work in this city at this mm -hmm. point because they're doing great things. I mean, from Save the Stages to, you know, helping with the hospitality groups. It's not just the performers. You know, they've even helped with different bars and things like that because yeah. that's their bread and butter. But what are some other shows that they're doing that you go, wow, we didn't think we would have that had they not been in Pittsburgh? Well, he's bringing in a lot of national acts. Yeah. He's working really closely now with Vinovsky Winery. Oh, he okay. He also has a summer concert series that I'll be I'll be part of that. I th that's next Saturday down at Oakland at uh, Fuel and Fuddle. Okay. So he's bringing in entertainment every week down there. But he just brings in really great acts. He's like ranked the number one promoter in Pittsburgh right. in the past few years. Well, and the and it's, tell me if I'm wrong. It's not just the giant venues. You're not just seeing Drusky Entertainment at a, at a bigger place. Like right. you said, it's Vinosky Winery. Right. Yeah. There's Stage AE. There's Carnegie of Homestead Music Hall. Right. There's Jurgles. There's Vinosky. Um, you know, he's he's really branching out, and he's in other areas too. Like there's Ohio and West sure. Virginia. There's other places. So. You know, I met him through Jennifer Stokes. She was head of the VIP uh, seating at 
Star Lake or whatever. Okay, it's yeah, whatever now. it is now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, Edwin McCain was coming in for a show, and he's the reason I even started writing songs. I was very inspired by him, and I asked her, I'm like, "Do you know Brian Drusky?" And she said, "Yeah, he used to have an office right next to me. You know, she knew him very well. Made the call, put me on the show. It was, and that's what opened everything. And then from oh, then, wow. you know, I did a Christmas show with CeeLo Green. I, I've opened up for Natasha Bedingfield, Blue Oyster Cult. Um, Ed, obviously Edwin, uh, Uncle Cracker twice now, Jeffrey Gaines, and it's just... Is it to the point where Uncle Cracker is like, oh, I'll take Mark again? I don't I don't know. I mean... He, I think so. I'm, I I'm mean, saying that, Mark. I was a Go pr- with like, it. It was two years ago we uh, I opened for him, and I was uh, <coughs> immediately put on the next time he was coming, but that got canceled last year because of COVID, oh, okay. and so it's rescheduled, and I'm on it. That's but, awesome. But yeah, I mean, these guys are really cool. Like, I went yeah. in to see those dressing room after I was done, and he sang my Christmas song back to me, like the hook. Yeah. And we, I was, we were all just Get laughing. We were cracking up. I, I couldn't believe he heard it or was yeah. listening you know yeah so um and i just opened for kip winger last month wow you know, red beach is yeah Pittsburgh, yeah July. right yeah. yeah yeah so uh kip and reb were acoustic that night and you know i did my whole original set and talked to reb i met mark madden he was in, i love mark madden <laughs> yeah too. right so uh, you know, Listen, i went and talked to him yeah. it was a great night so. he and mark madden is a great guy you know as rob yeah. you know rob and mark go back and forth but they're very good friends as well but mark has done great things for our hockey world even oh, i mean really? he's yeah. oh yeah oh, he, he started hockey. deck hockey yeah, yeah. In Pittsburgh, yeah. so we definitely credit him. And ladies listening, I tell you, it's a it's a shtick. He is the perfect gentleman when you're around him. Truly is. He is He's a great nice. guy. Yeah, yeah I went he up really to him is. And I was a little nervous, but he was super <laughs> nice to me. I gave him a couple CDs. And, yeah. And I told him that you know my dad used to teach at North Hills School District, and so did his mother. Right. And they knew each other. And I just you know yeah. Him, you know what a small world Pittsburgh, right? Six degrees. Yeah, yeah, it really is. So uh, favorite venue in Pittsburgh to play. My favorite venue uh, has, honestly, I really love the Carnegie Homestead Music. Oh, oh yeah, right. God. It's so well laid it, out, right? It is, and, yeah. it's, and the sound and the yes. acoustic. It was just beautiful. I yeah. was solo acoustic for that show, and that's that's all I can talk about what was the sound. Yeah. yeah. It was beautiful. Yeah. I loved it. How many hours a week do you play guitar? Do you sing? Do you write? How many hours do you dedicate? Because what I want to do is anybody who's interested in being at your level, they need to know the kind of work that you put into Because it. you do have a full-time job. And we mm. say that yeah. to people to understand, like, right. put it in perspective. Like, our jobs, you know, they blend because mm-hmm. it's literally podcast into marketing into PR, whatever. Right. But for you, there's a clear distinction between right. teaching and then, so it's something you have to put the time into you do and when you have a full-time job you know you, you're 7 30 to 3 30 you're tied up there you know but being a teacher you know you have your summers off you have those vacations you have a little bit of longer breaks where you can it still lends well to the music oh profession. yeah sure yeah but when i first started like i wanted to just move to you know either new york or la or nashville but you know my parents were very you know Italian. yeah like you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna finish college you're yes. gonna get that degree you're gonna get that job and then when you get that job then you can monkey around with that but they right. knew when i would get that job i was gonna be stuck and right. in a good way i mean in a good way yeah. yes but uh so well, i managed yeah, to things. do the most i feel i can do in this city but you know without leaving yeah that's awesome know? yeah so, and look at how the city's that's building it. that's the best part yeah you know we talked about this before too because if you were you know if you were our age 15 years ago you went to college and you left Mm -hmm. and now people are sticking around you know because we do have resources like great local music right and the venues are becoming more than there were even when i was you know in my early 20s the the wineries that the cideries there's this place in acme pa called taddy bogle cider works yo we know it you know we know kurt he's we've been there kurt's the best they're like Four times this summer. Is that right? Weeks. Oh, we How love we it there. Isn't it great? So it's you have those. Place. You have those venues. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and even Pittsburgh Downtown Partnership, they're doing a lot in Market Square still. Yeah. They do it. They did a pop-up stage now. It's called the Allegheny Overlook. Yeah. Yes. Right. You're hitting all our hot buttons because yeah. Russell's our boy. So okay, yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I did that like right before. It was like early July. I did yeah. a show down there. Okay. And you know so. You're so it, right. It's just keeping busy. Who just was on the pedal um, the pedal boat with us? Andre, uh, Costello. Andre Costello and he was talking about what you're kind of saying where Pittsburgh at one point it was like you could only oh if I could only get into Jurgles or if I could mm-hmm. only get into whatever that the hot spot is and now wineries and cideries and yeah. just these cool little sh- it's not just cafes and they want you to play your original music yes. versus just cover tunes yeah, uh, you, can, you know yeah yeah they, they do like having both yeah, I know at Taddy Bubble, they were promoting me, and they were they they were putting my original music out there, not not like the covers, you know, yeah. which sure. is great. Sure, that's what I really want. Right, yeah, that's right. what I Absolutely. push. Right. You know, yeah. But there's still the gigs that I'll do that they're the little money makers, and you're playing covers, and you spray some 
you know some originals in there too. Yeah. But the big shows that, that's all original music. Yeah. yeah. You know, and that's, that's awesome. you have to have your own music to get in those doors though. Yeah. That's you right. Know, you have to. I mean, you can learn and be a good guitar player and learn your craft by learning songs that are already out there. That's, Correct. That's like kind of the route. Right. But then once your skills develop and your chord, you know, you learn more chords and you learn more rhythms because of those songs you already learned that were already there for Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Then you can branch out and start to yeah. learn who you are as an artist. Right. You know? Build well, your own. Even for us with Odyssey, because of, you know, KDK and such, we would say to musicians, you can't do a cover because mm. it's going to take you right off. You yeah. know, we're not going to be able to, pro to yeah. actually l have right. people listen to Let's it. do an MTO band. Right, made to order. Right, okay. Who who would be your keyboardist if you picked and out of anybody, any keyboardist okay. in the world? Right, I, right? yeah, exciting. right. We're now we're trying to get from right. Yeah. Yeah. If you had to build a key, who's who's your keyboardist? My keyboardist is David Bryan Bon Jovi. Okay, yeah. and uh, drummer. Drummer, oh man, I, honestly, I'd probably still go, I'd go with Tico from Bon Jovi. Okay, I think those two are really solid. And you're wearing okay. a Motley Crue shirt. I am. This <laughs> is representing rock. I yeah, gotcha, there you go. Gotcha. And yeah. one last one, bass player. Bass player, oh man, I would say um, uh, Robbie from the Goo Goo Dolls. Oh, oh that's okay, a good one. yeah, yeah. That's a good one. Female yeah. singer, female singer, Rachel Renneberg. Rachel Renneberg. No, I'm okay, just kidding. Rachel. Yeah. <laughs> sure. No, best fe best female singer in my opinion. Who would you opinion? want to you kind of pick, back you yeah, up? Yeah, compliment yeah. you. You know, compliment. Yeah. Oh man, there's so many great I singers. I know, especially it's, women. It's hard to pick. I would. Ah oh, man, maybe. Uh, I mean, since I did a show with Natasha Bedingfield, she's there you she's go. Cool. She's yeah, very she. Versatile. I bet. She yeah. Can sing her nice. butt off. Uh, yes. You know? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You're, and you're such a down to earth guy. So <laughs> we're super fortunate <laughs> because you. we, you know, quick story. John and I met Cindy of. Um, Cindy, Cindy Stock, Stock at getting our hair did at Izazu yeah. and Mark's <laughs> name came up and we were like, yeah. oh my gosh, know yes, him. we love him and he yeah. has to come back on. So thank you so much for taking the time to yeah. come on with us. Thanks for having And where does everybody follow you and find you for music? The website is Mark Ferrari Music, all one word, markferrarimusic.com. And uh, from there, you know, you can find all the outlets. I mean, yeah. there's sure. Spotify, iTunes, Amazon Music, yep. all that stuff. Nice. Uh, Give him the question. Question of the day. Of the day. Yeah. All right. Hit him with it. We're ending the porch tour today, which means there should be a big ending. What would your definition of a big ending be for something significant? A speech, a specific song, or a simple wave and a fade to black? I would say a song. A yeah. swan song. A swan song. Yeah, I knew you were going to do a song. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. And then, thank you, Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. the way to end it and say goodbye. And everyone's on an up, up note. Yeah. What nice. Bon Jovi song would you end with if you could? What Bon Jovi song would I end with? I think it would be either Never Say Goodbye. Oh, that's a good or better roses. Okay. Yeah. Wow. I go for the ballads. Yeah, I was yeah. just gonna say. Well, but also, like in these arms, that's a little more upbeat, but it's yeah. still in the ballad genre. Okay. All right. Yeah. Wow. Nice. I'm not. I don't do like the living on a prayer. I don't. I don't like too much of the. The big, the everybody likes, yeah, yeah, like yeah. The anthem stuff. We did a question of the day on one of our porch tours that was, "What's the song that comes on that everybody loves, but you secretly hate?" And Aaron Martin said it was uh, Bon Jovi. Right? Yeah, really? no, it was no, it was Journey. No, it was Journey. It was Journey. Yeah, oh, that's really? right. Yeah, yeah. Really? and we were like, "Oh my God, people are yeah. gonna kill you." If you yeah. say that. That, it was just funny. The song that it, I think answer that, is yeah, that Justin Timberlake song. And I got the feeling. Oh my God, Mark, I <laughs> liked you until three seconds I, ago. I, I, she I, just unfriended I, you on Facebook. I like Justin, but that's. Song. I just I don't know. Maybe because it's, it's trolls. Cool. I don't know. Yeah. 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 So funny. Mine's Pharrell. Happy. Oh really? Yeah. You don't like it? <laughs> oh wow. I oh. hate yeah, it. And most that, people get mad. That kinda, yeah, I can see why. I can see. I love. Because he's a great composer and he's a great entertainer, but I hate that song. I, I, I can understand. Nothing's yeah. changing. That's funny. Yeah. I know. That's funny. Mark, you're always a player. Thank you so much, Mark. We appreciate it. Thank you. We're gonna. Are yep. you on a time frame? No. Are you All sure? right. Yeah. We're so, gonna interview the ladies. We'll get your song, your yep. video, and we'll be out in half within right. a half yeah, yep, yep. hour. God love cool. them. Cool. Bring out these crazy ladies. Uh, no. This is coming out it's after Cindy Stock. So yes, but your video we make will be to promote that. Mary Mac, come on over here. Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. But tell the ladies we're ready for them. Do it. No, but I think. All right. Cool. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Then so don't worry play about now. Mary Mac, you, you could stay on that. You probably better video wise to stay at that one. Do you care if he plays while the girls are out here? Because they wanted him to sing. Oh, no, that's great. That'd be great. Oh, well, hell yeah. You can right? Definitely play. Well, no, do your thing. Do no. No, no, just have fun with it. We don't we don't want you to feel obligated to play, but we also want you to have fun. Yeah. Okay. All right. You're fine. Yeah. Oh, my God. I think I have Ring of Mortis right now. That <laughs> Uh, all right, so if you're watching Facebook Live, Rachel's taking a little, uh, not a pee break, just a knee break. And Mary Mac is coming up. Mary Mac, talk, while we're waiting, let's talk about the standing chimney. 
Standing chimney, is it going to be open? Let's see. After August 31st, is Standing Chimney open? Yeah, we'll be open twice in September. We'll be open the first Saturday in September at our normal hours, which is 10 to 4. Okay. And then we're going to be open on Wednesday night, September 22nd, which is our big um, first day. I hate to even say this. I hate to say it. First day of fall. Oh, God. Yeah, right. It's hard um, to even imagine right now when it's so hot right now. <laughs> but we're going to be having live music on the lawn. And um, we have uh, we make what we call pulled pork Sundays for everybody. Oh my god! And it's a little bun with pulled pork, okay. coleslaw, and um, barbecue sauce on it. So it kind of looks like a Sunday, but it's uh, better. That than sounds a delicious. <laughs> that sounds absolutely delicious. Jesus. Yeah, much better. So we're in here. We're in here with Mary Again. Mac, and Mary Mac is we have to list out. Uh, we have to thank um, Ernie Ritchie Sausage Mancini's Bread. We have to thank. Uh, who else? Hey, Heinz History oh Center. Kennywood. Kennywood. Uh, and Jack and Eileen. For the yeah, for the Pierogi Fest, Fest tickets. Oh. And I uh, went to thank North Country Brewing because they get a six pack of your Jagoff beer. And then on top of that, Look Mary Mac stuff. Bakehouse. And we Mary Mac. Donna what she's getting. Right. So we have all these things the little nebbies oh, and the Jagoff oh, beer bread. Oh. These are oat brand muffin mixes. Wow. This and is, look what that is. Look what at is that. that. Johnny Angel's Johnny Angel's Whoa. kitchen. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a beer batter bread mix. There's oat bran muffin mixes. Uh, you wow. you get the Here We Go Steelers mix with Frank Nicotero on the oh, label. Oh, yeah. Comedian Frank. Uh, this is Johnny, Angel, Johnny Angel on this Angel label. One. This is me. This I'm little I'm little nabby on Isn't this. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And then a pancake mix and some delicious Paul Farms syrup from Pennsylvania. She's and from Wampum. Coffee. And she brings all this down. Sit down, Bonnie. Yeah, yeah, just take sit. that microphone right there as we present you with all these gifts. Oh, they're yeah, that's all right. coming We're on. We're going to get in there. Don't, don't worry. You worry. Yeah, don't, don't you worry. worry. Just sit down. So, we find it comical that the final what's that? episode no, I'm good for right of now the porch tour, they, all of the guests left. Okay, that's how putrid <laughs> the heat hard. was. <laughs> <laughs> They all were Donna's like, oh, like I'm signing up for the air-conditioned porch tour she next did. year. She coerced everyone to go in, even Mark. Our musician was like, I'm afraid to leave the living room. We had a out. Florida room <laughs> available to us, but we chose to sit out and sweat. <laughs> I didn't sweat yet, so. Yeah, uh, right. So, Mary Mac Bakehouse, you're one of the sponsors. So, we're just, we just we just talked to Donna. We gave her all this stuff. Mary Mac, you also have cinnamon buns. And where does everybody find your stuff? We talk about standing chimney, but where else can people, mainly online. Um, I'm at Standing Chimney uh, the first Saturday of each month. I just just today I um, am having fresh baked products at Spurduti Farms in Newcastle, Pennsylvania every Saturday because they're starting to get a lot of produce on. Oh, that's great! So um, I del- I'll be delivering Saturday mornings. I have um, mixes at um, uh, Quality Gardens at Bloom Cafe in Gibsonia. I have I mixes that's familiar. It's at Steel own. City in downtown Pittsburgh on Penn yeah. Avenue. Nice. Yeah. Yes. And I have uh, mixes online at our online store, MaryMacBakehouse.com, MaryMacPodcast.com. You can go on and buy um, baking mixes. You can get our fruit dips, our vegetable dip, our cheese ball mix. Um, all sorts of what baking mixes. Uh-huh. And then we just got our new um, T-shirt designs and things up. So you can go on and buy T-shirts and uh, coffee mugs and tote all bags and stuff, all kinds all of that. Yeah. Stuff. Well, yeah. And, and on top of that, in case you don't know how to make any of this stuff, you do a podcast on how to make things. Yeah, we have a podcast called In the Kitchen with Mary Mac where we um, come on and teach you to cook all kinds of different things and we correct really bad internet recipes <laughs> you know we do stuff like That's that it. fun stuff like That's that so, so we should we need time. to get a picture that you guys can use of, of you and with your items and all of the ladies like with your items so yeah. we'll pose that here picture. we'll pose <laughs> i'll jump out of here and you can pose oh, I'll move. yeah are you guys getting in you're getting a picture no, taken no. kids no, mrs cervone turn around I am. get a pic <laughs> I can't wait to introduce these ladies, these crazy uh, ladies, because there's no, yeah, just get in the picture and then you're good. All right, you go. awesome. All right, we got it. All right, all right. All right Mary listen. Mac, thank you very much. Do we have? Are, you're welcome. Are you going to fade out to black? Are you going to sing a song? Or are you going to give a speech when your crescendo ending? Um, I'm I'm going to say uh, a walk off song. Yeah, okay, is the big ending, and I was trying to th- decide between. Uh, 
Kiss, God Gave Rock and Roll to You, or the song from Carol Burnett at the end of the show. I don't know. Oh, it's a toss Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. That's a good com- comparison. I love that. I don't know what I would love that. Well, thank you, Mary May. Song? Let's hear that. Oh. Mary, you heard this question already, and it was a, it's a throwback. Oh. Oh, I, I mean, know. mine's There's happy. So many, so many I, you don't I, I'd like. I'd go on a long rant and then I'd have to go hours. <laughs> All right. so. No worries. All right, thank, Mary, thank you, Mary you. Mac, for everything. This is the Hand final porch tour. Mic. And as you said earlier, what are we going to do to drink next weekend? Right? Because we've been drinking every weekend on all of the porch tours. So, all right, cool. All now right. It's the do we have to let you out? Or do you. Do you get out. <laughs> Here, I'll get up. I'll get up. <laughs> Crawl. We're, we're going to now video Mary crawling underneath the table like a kid. It's Chi Chi's. Here you go. I'll help you. All right. Do it, Rach. Are these, stri- are these, uh, here, take mine. Wipe this off. Swap me. Because this goes far further. All right, perfect. Good, John. What are you doing? Oh, I think you're giving him the, uh, your microphone, too. Okay. They All right, got it. Yeah, I heard you say give my microphone. All right, cool. All right, here we go. Donna, pick up, pick up the mic. microphone, and here we go. All right. This is the end of the podcast. John, they And left. we had to save this. Listen to me. Right, they they were, Donna, she corralled them. She said, it is too hot. Come in my living room. <laughs> right. And that's what they did. And yeah, the, we left. It, we, I lo- we had oh, well, rest. that's you. You had that's to rest. Right. We you had needed rest. a little respite for the uh, for the interview. We took Mark in, and we were just getting ready to do he some karaoke. He told us. I know. He said he'll come sing. Where is he? He's he said he'll come perform. Come on, Mark. Okay. Come and sit with us. He's going to yes. perform. He's going to play course. music, and then you guys can sing with him. So here's the best part. Are we all part of the Merry Widows? Everybody? Everybody. Yes. These are all the Merry, Merry Widows. All right. Who's going to start talking about it? I'll, let me set it up because this is this is where it's like six degrees of separation, right? I am so lucky because I literally know every one of them in some way of my life, and they – They've known me basically since I'm born, baby. and so now they all sort of live around me, and they're intrigued by the fact that we have a podcast, and they actually called John and I a couple, of, like two years ago at this point, right? because they're all widows, and they're married, because they get together every single Tuesday, <laughs> and they do things together, which I think is, I mean, I know there's things like this out there, but these ladies, sometimes it's prayer sessions, sometimes it's planning a trip, sometimes it's drinking and gossiping, right? Oh, yes. But oh, yes. How, much, how much fun would it be to hear their podcast regularly? This is, that's just how I'm going to tease it, because I think you ladies need to get back in Mrs. Fetzer, you and were the we only want one. You to do that, and we're Rachel, and we are begging, going. Been begging. We, <laughs> you sound like my dad. When is my book going to be done? Yeah. Um, well, that's our next thing. About. There, you should. I mean, it's brilliant. So, talk a little bit about how it's been so therapeutic for you to all find each other and what that that woman's relationship is like. Because John just grabbed a brew. He's like, I am out. He's done talking. No. Uh, no, I'm I'm packing it in, getting ready for the. For this, for uh, this part, because yeah. this part might be longer than Rob Rossi's. <laughs> uh, no, never, never. So, never. talk to how did it even start? Well, it's and been five years. Yes, actually through church. Oh, it we was through church. Yeah, through okay, okay. Um, I started with it was another group, and then this group came. Yeah. Our first group was just salads and. Oh, for crying and soup, <laughs> and now it's like four courses <laughs> and alcohol and no. alcohol, always alcohol. Except at my house, you don't get all these four courses. <laughs> oh my gosh! No, you don't. Some you form should. of chicken, always, so right? And I ran into Eileen at church, and her husband had passed, and why well, I had seen her before prior to that, and she said, "Well, why don't you call Linda?" And I had tried talking Linda into it for She's a long a pistol. time. Yeah, yeah, she was. Yep, yep. So, yeah, them two came, and then Eileen brought Donna, Eileen brought Lenny, and Eileen brought Iris. And this is how this all came. And then we have another one, Kathy. I don't know why. I don't know who Kathy is. Do I know her? Is she your friend? She's the tall. No. no. My husband's sister in law called me and asked me if. You did tell me that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. Give her the mic. Yeah. How about she just. Just said, you know, she was having a really hard time, and she would really like, you know, to come. The camaraderie. And we were like, hey, we're, we got enough friends. We don't need. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, we did. We just we welcomed her with open arms, right. and she is hysterical. <laughs> She's hysterical. She's like real 
you know, yeah. real dry sense yeah. of humor. So it's like everybody adds something to, to the, the group. group. Although we must tell you, there is a moratorium on joining the widows at this point in time. <laughs> okay, listen. Our, our, we have our, we have married women pre-registered. Yes. My mother. Okay, let's start there. Right. Yes. That and is the joke the in my family. It is not even a joke. My father says this regularly. Like when he was sick, he said, oh, I know you had your ticket punched to get into the married widows, but it didn't happen yet. Thank God. Oh my God. Thank that God. Is so yeah. funny. That we is so, so funny. happy that he is. On I the know. Men. Thank God. We are lucky. Go ahead, John. What's no, your no, question? no. I just. I think there are so many men that are trying to make sure their wives don't get into. Yes. Club, right. Yeah. They're worried right. that there's some but like thing. Those women who have pre been asked for pre approval, your alibi is going to stink when your husband comes up missing. <laughs> this is true. Right. <laughs> That's what the husbands <laughs> say to us. Check, check us, check this out. There must be some investigation right. if we die and right. they join. That's right. hysterical. Do so the Merry Widows uh, have? Do they have a theme song? Oh, uh, we yeah. Have any song. Is that any what you song. cue Mark? Should well, Mark that's what I was wondering. This? Do we yeah. need to hire Mark? You know, Mark is Mark kind of overweight, not very attractive. You know, <laughs> uh, and. Uh, Right. Mark, don't worry. So <laughs> <laughs> that was good, John. And I I'm thinking how he was the, get it in. the last thing he needs to do is write you guys a theme song, and I think you guys are going. Ah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, Mark. And then Mark, we Mark, we could play it every it time we Mark. have our podcast. All right. With yes, and we could invite me, you yes. for dinner. Yes. I mean, come on. He's in. He's in. He's in. So talk a little bit about Mrs. Weaver. You said you were sort of apprehensive. I know. It's like uh, looking at my mother. She doesn't want to do it either. But so, why were you so apprehensive? Um, just shut the out. Way her the se- said. Gotcha. Shut okay. everything out. Except yeah. for my kids, my job. Yeah. And, you know, just didn't want to be around a lot of people. Okay. Move this a little bit further, closer. Um, so it was the timing? No, time had gone by, yeah. obviously, you know what I mean? I had years had gone by that John had passed, but I still wasn't ready to yeah. just be out there. So what was you the know? final straw? Well, Eileen calls me, Jan calls me, and they want to go to the movies. Mm-hmm. So we went to the movies. Mm-hmm. They tricked you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Jan had been calling me. She stopped by many times to see me, brought bottles of um, Amaretta, Amaretta. <laughs> we had drinks, but I just... And she don't drink it. that anymore. It's Grey Goose, by the way. <laughs> How did you go from Amaretta to Grey Goose? Uh, God! Well, every week it's a different thing, but yeah. obviously I'm not a pro drinker like some of my friends are. <laughs> uh, I have to keep changing things to make sure that it that tastes good. Yeah, right. But um, So we went to the movies, and from there we started dinner, and Jan kept thanking me. I, I can't believe I finally got you out here with us and I'm thankful for each and every one yeah Jan how did you know that that's I mean you obviously were going through something as well or or had been going through it and I'm sure timing is part of it for everybody time always has to be appropriate but what what did you feel the sense of like if we are together you know kind of explain that to people who are feeling this is it the togetherness is that that somebody else understands you absolutely yeah absolutely what do you do after 31 years? You find yeah. people who've gone through the same thing. Yeah. And it's not a replacement. No. 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 Not a replacement. But I would see Linda in the Giant Eagle, and she looked so sad. Yeah. And this was like five years after her husband had passed. Mm-hmm. And I'd go home and think, am I not grieving enough? You sure. Know, right. I felt so bad, you know. And then finally, after five years, I said to her, are you happy? And she said, no, not really. And I said, even with the widows? And she said... Well, yeah, I'm glad I'm into the widows and everything. And that's when I said, I took my ring off. And I said, love you, but we're good now. There you we're go. Good, you know, yeah. After five years. Aww. I don't know about the rest of them. I think uh, we've still got a little time with yeah, her. Yeah, Mrs. Survivor, <laughs> no. we still got a little time with Kathy. Kathy's pretty sad. and I, I don't really think there's ever a time. Right. I mean, that grief continues to, right. to go. And it and it's it's like waves. It come in, yes. comes in waves. Mm-hmm. And all of us are like that. You'll see, last week she was in a funk. This yeah. And I, I said this to her, well, what, what's up? What What's happening? Yeah. And uh, the same way well, with her. Her with birthday. Eileen, she right. got Eileen. first Iris. date. Right. First date. Anne's birthday was the 10th. Yeah. yeah. So Mike sure. died on the 9th. Right. Stan's anniversary is the 31st i don't like august yeah you know? right yeah you th- hers is coming up august 19th for so is that and do you know each other's at this point like uh-oh yes. like do you warn yeah. each other like we it's gonna happen yeah. yeah yeah 
and, and you, you kind of just, kinda say, just hey, thinking about you. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Send yeah. a little text or say, come on, we have to do this today. Um, just to get the, the group back together, the camaraderie. And I mean, we're, we, we all get lonely. I mean, it's not like we're, you know, right. we're immune to it. I sure. mean, we laugh all the time. Everybody thinks we're, um, we're the, just Mary. these merry Mary people, <laughs> but you <laughs> never get sad. But we whatever. love you. We want to be on like the you. Outside, but we're still crying woman. on the inside. Yeah. Yes, right. Right. sure, exactly. sure. But again, you know, we come as a posse. Yeah, you <laughs> are. We walk into a place, <laughs> people's head turn, and when we leave, then people didn't even know us, but they oh my knew God. us by the time we left right. that place. Yeah, yeah. You so do. whether we're drunk or right. whether we're sober, <laughs> they know who we are. Talk about the Hashtag widow Hashtag whether we're drunk or sober. <laughs> we bought a widow wagon. No, you, <laughs> you bought a widow wagon. <laughs> <laughs> and we want Linda to tell you yeah. about this. So video. obviously, you know, she bought this nice van. All seven of us can fit in. We pull up maybe to the fanciest place. I'm always the last to get out because I'm the smallest getting in the yeah. back. But it's like, oh my God, it's so embarrassing. We walk. It's like, how many people can you get in a phone booth? We just keep like coming the out. We just keep the clown car. Out. I love it. Do you have a magnet that says the Merry Widows or the oh, Widow? No, wagon? but we should get one, <laughs> right? We should get one. We will, Colin. We need to create them a logo the widow, the widow wagon, wagon, the widow and the wagon. wagon. Uh, <laughs> no now, now we know why they're not letting anybody in the group yeah. because their van's not big enough yeah. yet <laughs> they don't have the money for the school bus right. <laughs> well you're right because recently we had a lady come up to us and said her husband just well it was it's her actually, boyfriend her boyfriend yeah. and you guys were like that doesn't count right we said that <laughs> that doesn't count no it does with a couple of us all right all right but <laughs> She was with a guy. A it's long, the same, long time. right? It doesn't matter how long. My point is, you guys were saying we don't need more friends. That's why I thought it was funny. You're like, no, it doesn't count. We're keeping you out. We told her there's only seven seats. In yeah. A wagon. Yeah. No sorry for do. you. Oh my gosh. No, sorry for her. Oh my. Yeah. You need. <laughs> <laughs> don't give them any ideas, please. We're gonna get the noses next. Oh my God. Put one on you when you come out last. <laughs> <laughs> I Talk. usually say I'm it. That's it. You can take the car. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a driver? Donna. Oh, Donna's the driver. I'm the driver. I'm okay. The driver. John's a. Oh, that's right. John's a good driver. You should have hire him sometimes because he drives me everywhere. <laughs> then we well, he doesn't really. Well, yeah. I guess today. Well, you like? drank pretty quickly. <laughs> Oh, John. Yeah, right. Whatever, John. <laughs> yeah. Oh, just to fit in. I, d I don't drink. Yeah, Don is not a drinker. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. do make pe heads turn, though, John. Oh, she, he has <laughs> seen it. He has seen it in the parking lot at Johnny Angel Skinchy stuff. Oh Everybody stops. Oh no, that's fine. We went what out to dinner one evening, mm -hmm. and um, we were with a gentleman, and he was with all of us, right? Wow. We, <laughs> we were it? John. It was John. And we were having... Not you. <laughs> we were having we were having dinner and we were in the middle of of this porch patio, and this young couple came up to us and yes. said, "Could do you, we? You just have so much fun. Indoors. We wish you could. We could come over and sit with you." And we said, "Well, come on over. I mean, here we are, all these old ladies, right? Yeah, young couple, and they want to come over and sit with the widows." And did they? No, no, we no. were leaving. It started to rain. No, it rained no. That night. Well, they, we were sitting they said on the, the porch. John, luckiest man. Luckiest yeah. man. Isn't right. that the he truth? Had all of us. Oh right. my God! Different John. Unfortunately, <laughs> for John. What other things do you do? You've even gone to the point where you vacation together, right? Aruba. We we oh. were in Aruba. We've gone I a couple vacation. times a year. We try to make vacations. Okay. Never vacation. Just random. Small it's weekends. Not, uh huh. You know, we've gone to Aruba. We've gone to the beach. We've gone to Geneva. We've gone to Connie out just a couple weeks then. We went to Myrtle and. September, and we're going to Turks, Turks and Caicos <gasps> in December. Oh, I wish my husband was dead. So, no. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, God, that's what we say about <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, I'm JK. On. I know. <laughs> Willie would not. He'd understand. This is for fun. I want him to be alive, but I want to go. I want to yeah. be ready to well, go you could come with us right so it's not really criterion to be podcast. friends I all right john we can podcast there i'm going without you though it's all chicks <laughs> i was never a traveler to yeah I met these right bitches. i remember you saying that <laughs> right. no oh, oops, you can I, I say no i drop bitch everyone what did i tell you okay. about that language sorry, you, you must control yourself 
Oh I can't leave God. her alone. I have to pull her back. Oh my God. We were on the tiki everywhere. boat. Everywhere. Yes, I heard. Oh Did you love God. it? Oh, it was fabulous. Yeah, this was our second time yeah, yeah. on the tiki boat. And she was on top of the bar. Oh my God, you're the reason they have rules in place. That's right. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is so funny. I want to hear why you guys feel. Donna, tell us why each of these, what do these ladies bring? You know, to Jan's point. Oh my goodness, each one of them brings something special. Yeah. Um, Jan, she is, once you get her started, she's the life of the party. Eileen oh is right up there. I mean, they're She really that. is. Oh, Unexpectedly, yes. Oh, yes. but yes, Unexpectedly. she is. Unexpectedly. Yeah. And if you allow her to have a drink, oh, God. you can forget it. She is gone. I have to watch her. I have to watch both of them. Uh -huh. Linda, I say to Linda, watch them because yes. we don't know where they're going or what they're going to do. Okay, so gotcha. We, we might have to go over and grab them away from somebody or okay. do something like that. Lenny keeps us in stitches. Okay. Because she's the youngest, but she can't hear. Okay. <laughs> She never eats. She's always hungry. She's getting Aww. sick. So she keeps us in stitches. And Iris, Iris is kind of like, nah. She's like the glue, well. you know. Oh, she just okay. goes along. She doesn't yeah. get upset Passive. about anything. Mm -hmm. right. She never says, I want to. I don't want to. Right. She just, she just, goes she's there. The yeah. She just goes with the flow. Yeah. And Linda, she really wants to be the boss and take my <laughs> mind. <laughs> My, Look at her. My place away, you know. But, <laughs> but she you knows she's just not ready. She's yeah. just not ready to take that role. Yeah. So Because um, you said so. Right, because I said so. She buys me and Jan shirts. Boss number one, boss number two. Yeah. Oh. Really, really. Yeah, she she's can. the one. Oh. And Kathy. And Kathy. Kathy. Kathy, who's not here, she is just hysterical. Yeah. I mean, she comes oh up with goodness. these one-line zingers, and yeah. you wouldn't even think yeah. that she'd have that much to say. But, yeah. boy, God she does. And she always hits it right yeah. on the nail you don't even know it's coming no well listen we appreciate that you guys have us you're gonna get to have mark play a song and you guys can sing like okay. we're gonna get that on but as we do that john grab him grab the mic off of donna for a second okay. let's Rachel, do i want to ask you a question oh we go ahead oh boy <laughs> we. we can totally do it you guys just have to put if you really want to do it let's talk about well, it listen do. we're so bad i i want to listen to your dad's radio thing i don't even know how to get him online i'll help you yeah, yes we'll you have John, to show us we how to will do start it. with they, they meet every tuesday look at his face let's yes. just start with let's look at his face we'll yeah. cook dinner for you yeah you <laughs> eat here you and we're going to teach them how to download all and right and we'll start there okay okay and then we'll take notes okay you come to my house too so you're getting kentucky fried <laughs> i love kentucky fried chicken he does i love it yeah he get does. the coleslaw i love it i love kentucky fried you know chicken know a guy who likes peanut butter and jelly Oh, he's not okay. a jelly, right? Well, I'll do peanut Who's butter, peanut but not butter jelly, yeah. Hey, we got this new liquor. It's called peanut butter whiskey. I've had it. Yeah. We tried it? it. Yeah, it's quite good. Yeah. 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 Well, hey, John, Jan let's close the show. Have, to, <laughs> have you had it with baby? Oh, wow. Yes. Well, let's close. All right. Is, do you know this has been a two-hour podcast? I yeah, right, go right, home. right. That's right. why and we went we'll in the talk. house. And then we'll talk. And then we'll talk. John. So we have to thank... Thank everybody for Zachary's mission. Right. Yeah, thank you for all the, the, this is the last porch tour. This is our crescendo ending for Zachary's mission. All, so many items have been collected for Zachary's mission yeah. that it's Patricia had to get room. a new garage. Yeah. And uh, almost. But uh, we have to thank for the people that were partners on the porch tours. Jandy Waterproofing, Mary Mac Bakehouse, and uh, Kennywood, Heinz History Center, the North Country Brewing folks who gave you Jagoff Beer. Ernie Ritchie and Sausage. And Ernie Ritchie Sausage and Mancini's Bakery. So it's totally cool. And, of course, uh, we thank our guest today, Mark yeah. Ferrari, who's going to entertain the ladies after we leave, I think. I and, think. Uh, right, I think. They are loaded with dollar bills. <laughs> <laughs> right. We, we have our... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, we, <laughs> oh no! We and have our gift for uh, Zachary's, yes. um, Zachary's um, mission. Mission, and um, we decided not to load load you down with packages, but we are giving a financial donation. God love awesome. donation. Zachary, oh, well, aren't you sweet? So thankful. That's Patricia's awesome. Wonderful. So thank you to all of these folks. Thank you, as always, to Rora Conda. Oh, and uh, Rob Rossi, our guest. Oh, my gosh. Guest, yeah. Rob, Thanks to Rob how Rossi. How can you not enjoy Rob? Yeah. Thanks. And Liz Q. Liz Q, <laughs> right. That was such an awesome story. And, of course, Mark Ferrari, our musician today. And Rora Conda. Rora Conda is aware of the vehicle shortage, but there's never a shortage on helping a customer. So if you know what make, brand, or style car suits you, chat it up with the rep now and get exactly what you want by pre-ordering. Now we watch Mark Ferrari serenade the Merry Widows. He? he left. He, he left. He had to tune his... Um, he's in there oh, tuning. He's tuning. Look, All he's right. going to serenade you. Look, he's oh, going to come out like... I promise. Like I he's coming out in concert. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, this yeah, is the song. You're go. good, Mark. All right, so Mark. We'll put your microphone up in that stand. All right. And then we'll...
will hold this one next to his oh. guitar. How do you do it? Like this? You got yeah, it. Yeah, there you yep. go. Just slide. Up higher. Up higher yeah. to get the just wire. Slide it down. There That's you it. Go. You got it in, Jan. Are you going to sit there more? No, no, Jan, I'll stand. Jan, you mind holding I'm this near his guitar? Just sort of, since you're sitting there, it should be relatively okay. just somewhat close. Yeah, that's good. That's perfect. Now you're learning how to podcast. It's a new doo-wop group, Mark and the Widows. What? <laughs> we good? We're ready. All right, this song is called Long Way. It goes like this. the past to me, the reason I believe, you're my home, I think you should know, and I'll never forget the beauty you possess, you're in my soul, and I think you should know, I couldn't love you less. You're better than all the rest I need you now It's a long way home It's a long way home When you're lost in the dark And your heart's torn apart Shaking in your bones It's a long way home It's a long way home When you can't find your place your faith won't let go come. It's a long way home. You're my universe, an angel on the earth. You're my world, I think you should know. And we won't eclipse, you're the reason I Shaking it. 